Okay, so we have a very special guest today by the name of Brian Chu. And Brian is a former employee of the Department of Defense in Eastern Europe, and his resume actually goes on. I will let him um, introduce himself further. But today he's going to talk to us about how conscious computers interact with our brainwave activity and how that affects our targeting experience. So, uh, Brian, welcome, and I thank you very much for taking out of your busy schedule to come and speak with us today, and I'll Hello. let you further introduce yourself. Go right ahead. Hi. Uh, am I coming through clearly? Is the call, is the volume, is the sound clear? Yes, it is. And the, the, before you start, let me just say, um, for those of you listening, welcome, and thank you for coming. Um, you're going to get a lot of information tonight. So I would suggest that you take notes, and we'll have uh, a, a time at the end where, uh, where Brian will answer any questions that you may have, okay? So so take your notes, okay? All right, go right ahead. Uh, are you going to record this, Renata? Are you going to do yes, the recording in the, in the intro and yes, the recording? I am. Yes, it is recording right now. Okay, great. Uh, well, I want to say thanks for having me on. Um, I did ask my friend Magnus Olson to call in, and he said he would, but he just got uh, just off the phone him earlier today, and he said they're using sleep deprivation on him, so he's not going to be able to call in. Um, maybe if he can get some sleep, he'll call in later. Um, yes, I but, hope so. Uh, That'd be nice. Yeah, but I, I, I like I like to talk to, to targeted individuals about these about these subjects because for me, um, my targeting began uh, on an uncertain date. I can't say for sure when it actually began. I can only say when it was well underway. And that was back in 1997, 1998, uh, my second year of law school at the University of Liverpool. I was in the Cayman Islands, and I was moving towards the Liverpool campus of the British West Indies, and I crossed the parking lot, and in front of the police station were two individuals, a man and a woman. They were standing in the entrance. Well, I knew the chief of police, um, and I knew most of the police, and I didn't recognize them. Uh, so I didn't say hello. I just kept walking. And uh, suddenly, as I was walking past them, I heard a voice say, speak to them. And, you know, it was clear, it was audible. I had no idea about biocommunication technology and how it works, synthetic telepathy voice So I didn't know anything about this. It stopped me in my tracks, um, thinking I was hearing things. I kept walking, and then I heard the voice again. And so I turned around, and I walked back past the man and the woman, and then I walked back past them again several times before I just decided that I was hearing things and I would keep moving. But after that, I started experiencing directed energy attacks, and I would have panic attacks and be unable to breathe from, from what I know now to be directed energy attacks. At the time, I didn't know. And so building a pattern and connecting the dots, I can say that my targeting began 20 years ago, uh, in 1997, 98, that academic year. Um, but it, could it go back to childhood? Yes, it could. It could go all the way back to childhood. Um, in fact, when I tried to run FOIA requests, um, I kept noticing that the word Birmingham Field Office had been erased from the FOIA before I could before I could file it. So there may have been something going on in Alabama where I was staying before I left the states to go to law school at the University of Liverpool. Um, how many people do you have on the call right now? Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, it looks like close to 20, but there are more coming. Okay. Um, the This technology has been around for decades. Um, they've been using it for decades. How long it's been around, we don't know. Sometimes in the 50s and the 60s, we can say that it began. Um, but when it actually started, we don't know for sure. But, but uh, the technology itself has been around in various forms for thousands of years. Religion is one of the biggest mind control tools ever invented by man, organized religion. But organized religion and this technology are totally different. And so we can say that mind control by way of directed energy, uh, electromagnetic energy interfacing with nanotechnology has been around roughly since the 1960s. Uh, and uh, I don't, we don't, we can't really say for sure uh, whether or not they were using uh, the same technology, some of the technologies that they're using today. But I wanted to talk uh, first about the history of, the, of this technology and where it began because um, a lot of people don't know 
um, that, that they think that there are hundreds of thousands of victims. No, there are millions of victims. This technology has been around for quite a while. Um, and it started with, uh, with well, Jose Delgado. Dr. Jose Delgado started uh, this um, uh, directed energy mind control technology back in the 1960s with this famous bull experiment. And the CIA later hired him and other notable scientists like Dr. Jacobson out of Norway and others. Um, and that's when, uh, shortly after that, it went black. The technology at first was open uh, and, and other universities were, were in, employed in developing this technology and the training, research, and development of it. But shortly after that, in the 1970s, the program went black. Uh, and it was only that, you know, through uh, MKUltra that we discovered that it was even happening. And at that time, there were hundreds of programs under MKUltra. And we can say if there were hundreds of programs, there were probably thousands of projects that fell under those programs. Um, of course, the CIA said that you know, they would stop after challenge, being challenged by the U.S. Congress. They said they would stop and they would halt. There would be no more non-potential human experimentation with mind control. We now know that's a lie, uh, obviously. Uh, we wouldn't be here. Um, but uh, again, this... This is not just a, uh, I've been around the world, uh, the Western world, and this is just not an, an American phenomenon. Uh, it's happening in Europe, it's happening in uh, Central America and South America. I was heavily, heavily stalked in those places. Uh, even in Cuba, I noticed I was being followed, though I wasn't being stalked. Even in Russia, I noticed I was being followed, but I wasn't being stalked. But the other countries all throughout Europe, from Spain to uh, West, Eastern Europe, up into Western Europe, up into Northern Europe, into Scandinavia, there was heavy stalking uh, down in Central America and South America. I was heavily stalked and attacked. Uh, and, and in the Caribbean, obviously, where this began, the Cayman Islands all the way to Cuba. I've been to Cuba three times in the last two years. I've been to Russia three times in the last two years. So this, this is a global phenomenon. It's, it didn't just start recently, and it didn't just begin with the Americans, although the Americans are further ahead than, than most of the other countries. I would, I would imagine with the British uh, far a distant second. Um, did you have an outline or anything you wanted to ask? Uh, if you do, just interrupt me while I'm speaking. Okay. Um, I, I did want to know about the um, supercomputers. <clears throat> I know that you call them conscious computers. Um, and I believe on the last um, call I heard you on, you said that these um, Conscious computers actually have a, a mind, a will, and an intellect. Is that correct? Okay, right, okay. All right, when you're targeted with this technology, um, which is more sophisticated than the space program, um, what they do is this, the CIA and DIA hide my team. There are four organizations behind all of this. The department, doc, so says Dr. Robert Duncan and, and other scientists. Uh, the Department of Defense, my former employer, they provide all the money. They provide all the funding for, through their black ops uh, budgets. The NSA provides the top scientists. It is the CIA and the DIA specifically, the Central Intelligence Agency and the Defense Intelligence Agency, which provides the handles, the operators, etc. Those are the people that are involved in the hands-on torture, okay, the hands-on uh, direction of the paradigm against target individuals for the purpose of mind control. It's the CIA and DIA that's attacking you. They are the ones which comprise the hive mind team. These teams are composed of three to six people, uh, and they're contracted. The CIA learned its lesson the hard way with the Church Commission hearings in the 1970s. And so they're not going to hire and, uh, and use people directly under their employment where it can, if they're caught, be traced back to them. They're going to use private companies and private contractors, and that's what these people are. They're, they're people, these, these hive mind teams are comprised of people who have uh, some degree of expertise in the area of the mind, particularly as it relates to memory and thought process. So you're talking about these contractors being psychiatrists and psychologists, behavioral scientists, neuroscientists, and so on. They have, uh, they're highly, highly uh, trained and highly educated people, many of them uh, intellectual barbarians, I would say, uh, and they're the ones that comprise the hive mind teams. And every eight hours, that shift will change to a new team. Okay, so there'll be you know, they'll do the radar shift and go home, and then a new ship will come on, and they'll pass the mind control victim, the target individual, off to the new team. Uh, what they do when you're first targeted with this technology is they move close to you. They get near you and next to you. And they obtain uh, remotely uh, an EEG readout 
of your brainwave signature. It's called a digital brainwave imprint. And they take that digital brainwave imprint, that, that copy, that digital copy of your, of your brainwave signature, and they download it, or I should say upload it back into their, their supercomputer, which is actually a conscious computer. And then they tie you to that conscious computer for life. How? By way of a continuous stream of energy, uh, of electromagnetic low-frequency waves that are specifically tuned to your unique brainwave signature. Nobody else on Earth has the same brainwave signature. It's like a, it's unique to you alone. It's like a set of fingerprints. Nobody else on Earth has your same set of fingerprints. Well, nobody else on Earth has your same brainwave signature. And what the, the stream of energy is designed to do is it's, it's designed to, to interface and interact based on that frequency, based on your brainwave pattern. So what happens is they, they use the, the nanotechnology, which they get the targeted individual and mind control victim to ingest in their food or their drink or to breathe in, et cetera. And then once the, the, the nanotechnology is inside the body, it migrates to the brain, and that nanotechnology adheres to the neurotransmitters in your brain. And that's how it's able to speak to. It's able to speak to and decode the neurotransmitters in your brain, and that's how they're able to turn the brain of the mind control victim into their, you know, their very own visual, verbal, and auditive communication system. It takes time. They have to build a cognitive model uh, for, for, the, for the purposes of being able to do that. But that's how, the tech, that's how the technology is designed to operate. These conscious computers are way beyond... Everyone's talking about quantum computing being the next a phase in the evolution of computational thought. No, no, we're way beyond quantum computing. Okay, we're we're way beyond that. Or I should say, the government is. The government is about 80 years ahead of the, the technology available on the market, and they are centuries ahead of the technology which is not available on the market. So, uh, it, what you see in these 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 children games, uh, these you know, these new cars that you drive with your brain waves, these, these prosthetic arms and legs that you move with your brain waves, those are all based on old um, algorithms, the, the older technology, artificial intelligence technology. Today, when we're talking about these quantum computers, they're, they're not artificial intelligence. They're way beyond artificial intelligence. You're talking about artificial life. These, these supercomputers are actually artificial life. They're remote neural networks uh, with a will, intellect, and emotion of their own. Now, where did they get that will, intellect, and emotion? They got the will, intellect, and emotion from the millions of people who have been targeted with this, this technology through the decades, whose personalities, the, 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 the digital uh, bio algorithms were, were, were uploaded back into the system. And so using those algorithms, they're able to, to, to mimic the will, intellect, and emotion of those that they copy. Let me, let me explain what I'm talking about. The uh, artificial intelligence, as we understand it, is based off if and then algorithms. If and then. If this happens, then we'll do that. If that happens, then we'll do this. That's artificial intelligence as we know it, and that's artificial intelligence which is on the market today. Can you still hear me? I can, and I'm shutting down a lot of questions, so... So, so that's, that's artificial intelligence, these if and then algorithms, okay? This is not based on if and then algorithms. Mind control technology today that the CIA and DIA are using, DARPA is using for the purposes of training, research, and development, is not based on if and then uh, algorithms. It's based on the reverse engineering of the human mind. So what happens is once the CIA and DIA hive mind teams move in close to you, next door to you, or above you, or below you, and they obtain a, an EEG digital brainwave imprint of uh, your brainwave signature. They download that back into their supercomputer, their conscious computer, and then they tie you to that supercomputer for life by way of remotely, by way of a continuous stream of energy, a continuous stream of electromagnetic low frequency waves. And that stream contains a hidden carrier frequency. Okay, the and, hidden and, carrier and, frequency. Brian, excuse me for interrupting. So this stream of energy, how is it transmitting from the location where the hive mind team is to the individual? Is that happening via satellite? Well, they use three methods. They use towers, satellites, and mobile platforms. But the, but the, the, the stream of energy is, is, is routed by a computer multiplex. So a computer multiplex, okay, the, the supercomputer, conscious computers, uh, they're, they're the active trigger switch. People think they're being attacked by, by, by cell phones and towers. No, you're not. Towers and satellites and cell phones are not attacking you. 
You're simply the relay device. You're being attacked by a supercomputer. It's a conscious computer that monitors all electromagnetic activity of your brain, all the electromagnetic emissions, the evoked potential. It measures and monitors and downloads all of that at speed of light. As soon as you think about it, the supercomputer, by way of the continuous stream of fabricated, falsified energy, okay, is able to download those thoughts back into its system, its RNN system. So what's happening is a computer multiplexer is routing the signal to the tower, the satellite, or mobile platform, and then the tower, satellite, or mobile platform relays the signal to the digital receiver, okay? Similar in, in many ways to how cell phone technology works. Okay, so the digital receiver, just like a cell phone, is tracked and pinpointed in real time. Except with mind control technology, the digital receiver is not a phone. The digital receiver is a human brain. Your brain has been digitalized by the nanotechnology, by the implants, et cetera, in your body, your bloodstream. The nanotechnology, and remember, adhering to the neurotransmitters of your brain. Okay, and so that's how they're able, the stream of energy that's routed from the supercomputer to the tower to you contains a hidden carrier frequency, and they're able to interface with the nanotechnology in your brain and the computer. It's called the brain-to-computer interface. There are two different interfaces they're using. There's, there's the brain-to-computer interface, and that's a similar uh, kind of to the, to the same uh, interface that, that the, the pilot of the F-35 stealth fighter, he uses, he uses his brainwave to control the stealth fighter. He doesn't control the stealth fighter manually if he doesn't have to. He controls the entire fighter and all the weapon systems of the F-35 with his brainwave. This is called transcranial brain stimulation. Okay, so, so the same similar technology is being used with a targeted individual, the mind control victim. The stream of energy is operating through a process called transcranial brain stimulation. So they're able to actually uh, to, 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 to inject uh, impulses and memory attacks, uh, a visual entrainment, verbal entrainment, uh, two-dimensional images, um, and the visual entrainments will include even short little videos, uh, uh, et cetera. And this is how the technology works, the dream modulation, the, the neuro-linguistic program. It all is, is dependent upon this continuous stream of unbroken energy interfacing with the nanotechnology in your mind. And that's how the technology, that's the simple explanation of how the technology works. People think they're being attacked with cell phones. They can, they can attack you with cell phones. They can get the devices down to the modular level. But that, but that is not how this technology is designed to work. They know how to zap people with directed energy. Okay? This is about mind control. Okay? So you're not being attacked with cell phones. They want you to think you're being attacked with cell phones to discredit you. Okay? The technology is not designed to work that way. Uh, again, I, mean, I think they can get a, even a cyclotron down to the size of a, a, of a cell phone. So they can break these devices down to the modular level um, but usually in the, the cell phones are, are nothing more than control switches, control devices, okay? They're not, you're not being attacked and zapped with cell phones. And people need to understand that. You're being attacked by a supercomputer. And the supercomputer is using three things. It's using a tower, satellite, or mobile platform. And when I say mobile platform, you know, that, that's kind of ambiguous because it can include a lot of different things. It could be, you know, uh, as big as a truck or as small as a briefcase. It could be a ship, a boat. It can be a car, a van. Um, they use the, they set the, the, the equipment up in the form of what's called a nightstand, uh, and then that mobile platform interfaces with the supercomputer, and that's how they're able to attack you with the supercomputer, with the supercomputer interfacing with those three uh, methods, as I just told you, the tower, satellite, and mobile platform. That's how it works. Do you understand? Oh, yes, I do. Okay, so I have a bunch of questions, that, um, but I don't want to take up, you know, all of them. Go ahead, go, so ahead. Said, you, go ahead. You let me know when you're um, open for questions from the, the listening audience. There are quite a few people here now. Um, if you guys well, let me, let, me say, let me say that there are a few people here. Uh, I am not a scientist. I went to law school. I didn't go to medical school. I have no background in neuroscience. Um, what I have learned, I have learned on my own through research in the libraries and, and on the Internet in, in Europe and here in the States and Central and South America. And I have been able to take the resources of these very notable scientists like Dr. Robert Duncan, Barry Trower, John Hall, Terry Roberts, Easel, Van Winkle, et cetera. I've been able to take all these, so many scientists, I can't even name them all, okay? And I've been able to take their, their resources, and then I've been able to build off of their research by contrasting their resources with my own personal experience. So uh, Brian, you know, people say Brian is smart. No, Brian studies smart people. Brian is not smart. He studies smart people. 
So I, I want to say that off the bat that this, you know, that we should all be very thankful for these scientists who have risked their lives to protect people they didn't even know, uh, and they should be prayed for. Um, and who, you know, they risked everything, and some of them have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Okay, they've been killed, and yes. so we owe we owe them a great. Uh, uh, their consciences would not let them sleep. Um, you know, it wasn't their fight. They had no dog in this fight, uh, but. You know they were they were drawn into it because they could not sleep at night, uh, and we we need to say thank you to them, uh, every one of them. Yes, so, we do. So I, I have no formal education in neuroscience. I've simply done a lot of research on the technology, and law school taught me how to do research. You learn how to research in law school. So that's that's how I obtained this knowledge. Um, you know, I'm not. People say that I'm I'm caught. I'm reading Dr. Robert Duncan's book every day. No, I'm not. I I I I don't read Dr. Robert Duncan's books. I study Dr. Robert Duncan. And the resources of other scientists, um, but you know, I don't care if they want to malign me and attack me. That's fine. I want to, as long as people are helped. Because if you don't understand, if you don't have a basic understanding of this technology, and and the basic tactics which they use, which they deploy against you, then you're going to be you know, running in circles your whole life until the day of your untimely death. You're going to be chasing the proverbial white rabbit down the hole for the rest of your life. So that's why I'm on these calls. Uh, that's why you know I, I, I got on uh, uh, on the you know radio. That's why I've been interviewed by media, German media, South American media, La Prensa. Uh, I've been I spoke with the uh, uh, Discovery Channel. I was interviewed by them. I spoke with the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights. I was interviewed by him in Brussels. Um, they all they don't understand the technology, and the problem that you're dealing with is your is because the technology. It's called the Occam Razor Principle. The more complicated the technology, the less the likelihood of belief by the ordinary person. And so that's what you're dealing with. The people in 20 years, they'll believe that this happened because they'll understand the technology. Right now, that's why I'm on these calls, to help people understand the technology. Well, you're helping me to understand already, and I really do appreciate it. I have a question about the, um, the hive mind team. Okay, I'm wondering how is this hive mind team First of all, I want to know where they're located. They're probably all over, but I, I just yeah, they already got to... they already got somebody next to me trying to get my attention. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I'm wondering where this hive mind team is located, and I'm wondering how they're able to monitor so many people. Because this is a supercomputer that uh, are able to conduct you know hundreds of thousands of calculations per second. So it's all automated. Uh, it's all automated, active, and adapted to the targeted individual, to the mind control victim. You know, this isn't somebody, this isn't just a, you know, a, a group of people behind a desk. I mean, there, there are hive mind teams involved in this. Um, but this, this whole, the whole uh, system is automated. The whole RNM, remote neural monitoring, remote neural manipulation system. And there's a big difference between remote neural monitoring and remote neural manipulation. Um, that's, that's how so many people can be targeted with this technology because these supercomputers, these conscious computers with a will, intellect, and emotion of their own, they're capable of hundreds of thousands of calculations per second. You understand? So the high mind team then is maintaining the supercomputers. That's what their job is. The high mind. They're, team. they're interfacing with with the, with the supercomputer. What happens is the, uh, the the high mind clone, the leader of the of the high mind team, or one of the leaders, is called the clone, and he's like I said, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a neuroscientist, etc. Someone with a basic uh, understanding uh, an expertise in the area of the mind, and this is remember this specifically relates to the memory and thought process of the mind. So the clone will be the head of the hive mind team. This is CIA and DIA contractors. Okay, they're, they're doctors. They're, they're hiding in plain sight. They're not you know on some underground base somewhere. They have careers. They have jobs. They have families. They have mortgages. You know these are these are real people. Okay, it's just that no one knows the horror that they're engaged in on a daily basis. Uh, and they know better than to ask questions. Okay, so you're dealing with a clone who is the head of the hive mind team. Okay, he is the one who clones his brainwave signature to your brainwave signature. And by cloning his brainwave signature to your brainwave signature, he's able to to verbally and, and visually uh, take his impulses, our, uh, his 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 thoughts, his his emotions, and clone them to your mind. Okay. So each, at each shift change, every eight hours, the clone, the two clones, the, the, the clone from the, from the shift that's actively monitoring you and the clone that's coming on to the next shift, okay, those are the people that will be involved in, in the actual uh, hands-on 
uh, torture. Now, there's also more people involved in the CIA DI hotline. And you're talking about a firewall, and I got a lot of this information from Dr. Robert Duncan in his book. Um, but the firewall is actually not a software program or a hardware program, although software and hardware are involved. The firewall is actually the human brain, and which is necessary so that there's no breakdown in the bidirectional uh, link between the, the clone and, and, the, and the target individual, the mind control victim. Okay? Because if the firewall breaks down, then they've got trouble. And the, the, the mind control victim can begin to, because theoretically, uh, if they're able to read your mind using this technology and they clone their brainwave signature to your brainwave signature, then you theoretically should be able to read their mind. You should be able to hear them think out loud, synthetic telepathy, et cetera. Okay? But you can't do that because of the firewall, because of the other individual. And the same technology that's in your body, the nanotech, et cetera, is in their body. Okay? So that's how the hive mind team is set up. The hive mind team is, you, know, you, you, will, you will interact with the hive mind team uh, at regular intervals, but, but they're, they're hiding behind law enforcement. They're hiding behind, uh, you know, a whole, I mean, this is an interdenominational, uh, interdenominational, I, went, I studied religion. Uh, this is an intergovernment agency operation designed to diffuse responsibility and cost. So there are a lot of agencies and organizations, state, local, federal level, a lot of personnel involved. You, you very rarely will have any regular daily interaction with the hive mind team, okay? But that's, who, that's the people that are dedicated to you. They are CIA and DIA operatives. And when I say CIA and DIA operatives, I mean these hive mind team members, okay, are contracted. They work for private companies. They're, they're the psychiatrist at the middle hospital. They're the psychologist at the, at the uh, children's clinic. They're the, the neuroscientist uh, at the university. They're the... You know, neurosurgeon, neuro, et cetera, at, at the local hospital. They're hiding in plain sight. Okay, they're, they're every day. Okay, that's how the, that's how the technology is, is, is designed to operate. And these hive mind teams are dedicated to the you, the mind control victim, every eight hours. Okay, and then they'll use other people to move around to, to harass and attack and target the mind control victim, constantly trying to provoke the victim into emotional responses which could be remotely measured and integrated back into R and data. Okay, they have to Okay, so, so that was that was one of my questions, Brian. I was gonna ask where this uh organized talking comes into play and why that why do they need the hands hands on like that? Because I'm I'm a person who gets the heavy stalking and, and a bunch of people on this call also get the heavy stalking. So what is the purpose of that if they already have these conscious computers working against us. Why do they need this in the face hands on tactics as well? Okay. Again, they're using trauma, physical and psychological trauma, to map out your sensory and neural pathways of your brain and central nervous system. Okay. In order for them to do that, they need to inflict trauma regularly. Not just physical trauma, but psychological trauma. Long term physical and psycho brutal psychological trauma is necessary in order to force the victim to disassociate from reality but also for them to be able to map out the brain. It's called whole brain emulation. They're breaking your brain down to the synaptic level. Okay, you have millions of neurons in your brain that communicate with each other through what's called a synaptic gap. The neurotransmitter is there, and that's how the technology, which is the nanotech, adheres to the neurotransmitters, and that's how the, the, the technology is designed to speak to and decode your thoughts. Okay, so I understand that organized stalking is part of, uh, of the paradigm to inflict trauma. Now, they use organized stalking for various things. They use it for surveillance. They use it, again, to provoke the victim. They use it um, to, uh, uh, to keep the victim from defeating the technology. There are many different reasons why they use organized stalking, okay? Um, but the main reason, uh, one of the main reasons, has to be the main reason, is to discredit the mind control victim so that no one will believe the atrocities are occurring. Try having a reasonable, rational conversation with the police about the fact that 100 hostile tra strangers are following you. It's just not possible. So one of the main reasons they do it, and there are many reasons for organized stalking, but one of the main reasons is to discredit the mind control victim. And then, and then of course, to provoke the victim into, uh, into uh, psychological trauma, fear, and paranoia, etc., in order to map out, to create electronic uh, emissions, to create emotional responses which they can remotely measure and then integrate back into their R&M data, okay? So, so they'll constantly, they're going to constantly get in your face. But it's more than that. They're looking for evoked potential, okay? They're looking for you to respond some way. So they may come up to you with the most mundane questions imaginable. They may come up to you and say, you know, you know what time it is? 
Well, can you give me directions to so-and-so place? Or is that on sale? What, how much did you pay for that? They're seeking to solicit a response. Okay, once, once, the, the, uh, once the, uh, the, the, the team's deemed they have enough of these responses, they, they, they correlate all these responses into what are called response statistics. Okay, and then that what they're seeking to do is they're seeking to build coherent patterns of thought. Okay, once they build coherent patterns of thought, then they can begin to, to map out the brain of the mind control victim. In order to do that, they use trauma. So understand, those are the various reasons why organized stalking is happening. But understand also that this, these organized stalkers aren't dedicated to you per se, the targeted individual. They're dedicated to all targeted individuals. Okay, that move through their area of operation, through their neighborhood that they live in. They live, work, and play in that area. Okay, so there's a great deal of indirection and plausible deniability to be involved. Okay, so they have a reason for being there. So they say to the police, no, I just live here. You know, this person's paranoid and crazy, you know. Uh, no, it's a no hypothesis of probability, meaning, you know, as far as proof is concerned, there's a mathematical fact that it's happening. But try explaining that to the courts and the police. It's not going to happen. Okay. Exactly. So what can you tell us about the V2K? And is that coming from the conscious computers as well? Right, right. They, okay, now, now when, when you say V2, V2K, that's just one, that's just one part uh, uh, of the uh, – there are many different programs. If there were 147 programs in the MKUltra, and we know that there were, uh, okay, and thousands of projects under those programs, think of what, what there must be now, decades later. You're talking probably – uh, close to 500 to 1,000 programs of mind control that they're using for the purposes of training, research, and development. And you're talking maybe, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of different projects. Okay, so it depends, first of all, on what program you're placed into. I can only give you uh, my understanding of the programs that I have experienced. So uh, these are just two of the programs, and remember, there are hundreds. And hold on just a second, I got a helicopter over there. Uh, okay, so... So what I can talk to you about is trauma-based mind control and uh, state-of-the-art mind control. And there's a big difference between the two. State-of-the-art mind control is based off the ignorance of the victim who has no idea they're targeted with the technology, whereas trauma-based mind control is based on, you know, it's just brute force hacking of the mind using trauma, long-term uh, physical and psychological trauma. So V2K is just one part of, of, of what they're trying to achieve. People think you know, that's... That's what they're suffering from. They're, they're trying to inflict trauma, and B2K is part of that. But it's much. The program is much bigger than B2K. Did I answer your okay. question? Okay. Yes, I just know there are quite a few. I didn't people. hear part of it. You broke up. Okay, go ahead. Yes, I just know that there are quite a few people who get the the voices. So I wanted to um, to ask you that. Um, so these, these uh, computers can obviously manipulate emotions and have people doing things they normally wouldn't do or say, correct? Right. They, the, the, the people, that, people that, for example, are state-of-the-art mind control, they don't realize they're being targeted with this technology. It's much easier to manipulate a person to achieve direct behavioral control over that individual who has no idea they're being targeted than it is to, target, to, to achieve direct behavioral control over someone who is aware they're being targeted. So you know, the, the programs are very different. But the technology is designed to mimic your normal cognitive behavior, okay? And that's, that's why this, this organized stalking occurs. Listen, organized stalking is about one thing and one thing only, or I should say it's based on one thing and one thing only, trait reference pattern. That's, I mean, if you want to break organized stalking down to, to the simplest reason of, of how it's happening, it's choice reference pattern, okay? They're using a pattern of your previous choices to stalk you. For example, they, they knew where I sat in the, in the trolley every day, and they knew the places that I would go and eat, and the favorite coffee shops that I would have. And they would have their organized stalkers there based on my, on my previous choices of those places. So understand that organized stalking is, is, is used against the target individual on, for, the, for the reason based upon choice reference patterns. Okay? And then what they do with this organized stalking is they engage in what are called situational scenarios and conversational scenarios. That's called street theater. You know, the stalking, organized stalking is based off street theater, and that's two things, situational scenarios and conversational scenarios. These situational scenarios and conversational scenarios are always going to be based on events or topics that they know will capture your attention. Another one of the main reasons why organized stalking is absolutely necessary for trauma-based mind control to work properly is because they have to gauge whether or not the neuro program, whether the technology is working effectively or not. 
and they simply can't do that without organized stalking. The only way to, to, to determine whether a person will commit a crime using this technology, mind control technology, is actually to have them commit a crime. You know, it, it, there's no other way for them to do it in, 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 unless they can isolate the individual, and even then it's, it, it's, it's problematic. So organized stalking is done to do that, to force you into isolation, okay? Uh, how, do, how do they do that? By creating, how do they isolate the mind control victim? By creating a hostile environment everywhere the mind control victim goes. Because it is a, I don't care how rational, logical, stable you consider yourself to be, uh, everyone has a breaking point, okay? You may be the most stable and rational individual in the world, okay? But you have a breaking point, okay? And that's what this situational and conversational scenarios are designed to do designed to provoke you into responses which they can remotely measure and to integrate back into RNN data, but also to determine if the technology is working properly through trigger stimuli. And when I say trigger stimuli, I mean trigger words, trigger symbols, trigger objects, et cetera, trigger colors. Uh, for example, based on events or topics that are going to capture your attention, your organized stalkers will one day sit down next to you and start having a conversation out loud about God. Your religious, they know this. They need to capture your attention. If they cannot capture your attention, their, their mind, the technology does not work. They must capture the target individual's attention, and they will act crazy as hell to do it. You know, if you, if you put earphones in your, in your ears, they'll start waving their hands around while they're talking. They're trying to capture the attention of the mind control victim. Okay? Okay, so, so, so that makes sense to me, Brian, because I'm one who uh, tries very hard not to interact with the stalkers at all because it just I just don't like it. And so um, I'm very good at ignoring. So they have escalated to the point where I'm getting more physical assaults now. I'm getting right. total strangers walking up to me, touching me, people right. in Walmart kicking me and running carts into me. And I'm thinking that's because I don't react as much as they would like me to. Right. They're going to force you to react. Listen, uh, Dr. Robert Duncan told me when he said in a, in a note that he sent, he said, Brian, stop playing the game. He was referring to the hyper game theory. Okay, the hyper game theory. Uh, they use the hyper game theory on you constantly to force you into a series of, of endless counter moves trying to survive. And at times, it's, you cannot, you can choose not to play the hyper game theory. You can choose not to play the game. At other times, you're going to play the game or perish. The facts are absolutely going to happen. Okay? So, these situational and conversational scenarios will turn violent, and with me, they have done that, okay, uh, to the extent that I've been put in the hospital as they become so violent, all right? But understand that they're all based off events or topics that they know will capture your attention. If they can't capture your attention verbally, they're going to do it physically, okay? That's what this technology is designed to do because each response is downloaded at speed of light back into the RNN supercomputer, the conscious computer, okay? It, the, the conscious computer, this, it, 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 it interacts with the mind control victim by way of a bi-directional stream of energy known as the information and injection feedback loop. Okay? So it's able to actually download and upload the speed of light. So, so they're going, they're, well, at the point at which you, the mind control victim, lashes out in violence or, you know, or does something, that's an important metric in their technology because it helps them determine how effective the neuroprogramming is. Okay? So without organized talking, organized talking is absolutely crucial to, to trauma-based mind control. Without it, there's no real effective way in, in, in a real-world environment for them to gauge and measure the, the technology, the neural program, to see if it's effective or not. Okay, I have a, one question, and then I'll take uh, a question from uh, someone in the audience. If you have a question, start eight if you have a question. Um, okay, so my question for you is, you mentioned how the brain, how this uh, conscious computer takes our brain wave pattern and how they move people in next door to assist with that. Um, is it possible that our brain wave patterns are also being recorded when we go to the hospital and do MRIs and things like that? Yes, yes. Listen, okay. those, when, they, when I say they download the, the EEG digital brain wave imprint, the, your brain wave signals, when they download that, that that's how like, the, the the computer interacts with you. But the computer is constantly recording everything. Remember, you're tied to a supercomputer which records all electromagnetic emissions of your brain until the day of your untimely death. It happens. That's how it works. That's why the, this, this whole brain emulation, you have millions of neurons inside your brain. So these synaptic responses, you know, it takes time for them to build a cognitive model of, of, the, of the mind control victim's brain. It doesn't happen overnight. Being able to see through the victim's eyes and hear through the victim's ears and feel 
or what the victim feels. The sense the victim senses. This takes time. This takes you know, time. They have to, to build a cognitive model of the, of, of the victim's brain. And the way they do that is by recording all electromagnetic activity of, of your mind. So, yeah, 24 hours a day, unless, you know, you're able to break the stream. Uh, you're, you're able to defeat the technology. Um, and then, you know, they, they have to prevent that. And they have to minimize any external interference to their technology, to their neural programming while they're doing it. So, for example, if you begin to listen to music or you go singing and dancing, engaging in outdoor activities, all of these external activities interfere with their neural programming. That's why it's so important for them to isolate the victim, okay, because they need the victim to internally focus or internalize on the neural programming. So they must minimize all external interference because they are recording the electromagnetic emissions of your brain. That's how they build a cognitive model. Okay. So, yeah, I w it was really important for me to ask you about the hospital because so many targets feel that um, things like that is happening when they go to hospital visits that their brain waves is being recorded. So I wanted to... You are you're, you're being recorded 24 hours a day. But listen, stay out of the hospital. I mean, I mean, let me tell you something. If you get, you get thrown into a mental hospital, you're being thrown right into the hands of the clones of the hive mind team. They may not I, I interact with you uh, directly, okay, or they may. Um, it depends, you know, again, on what program you're in. But the point is, they're, they're there. They're in the hospital, okay? And, and, and they, they, you have been placed right into their hands. They have isolated you to exactly what they need to happen. Mm -hmm. What needs to happen for you to internally focus on the microscopic okay. okay. okay, uh, Go ahead. Uh, finish thought, and then we'll take these a thought triggered right. attack. Okay, we're talking on a, a satellite. Uh, we, we may be talking on a delayed carrier, but I don't know. We're kind of interrupting each other. What were you saying? No, go right ahead. Finish your thought, and then we'll take a call. Okay, so what I'm saying is these are thought-triggered attacks. Okay, remote neural monitoring is absolutely essential for thought-triggered for thought -triggered attacks to happen. These thought-triggered attacks happen at the speed of light. This is, these are uh, uh, the, the technology... The technology is based, uh, all, all mind control technology is based on three things. It's based on um, uh, with censorship, and, and that censorship is designed to, um, to prevent you, to censor your activities, to prevent you from engaging in external activities that interfere with their neural programming. So censorship is designed to restrict you at will. And then you have the second, is which is called memory management. And memory management is simply blocking your, it, 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 these are memory attacks. You're using your own memories against you. So memory management is blocking your real memories uh, and injecting with false and fabricated memories. And there's a difference between uh, 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 falsified memories and fabricated memories. Fabricated memories are your own real memories that they're injecting, that they recorded, that they downloaded at the speed of light, and that they're injecting back into your subconscious at regular intervals in order to pitch you in some type of, of action or access sequence, okay, for, for the purposes of verifying their technology is working, okay. That, those are called fabricated. They're your own real memories that they downloaded and they're injecting back into your subconscious at the speed of light. Falsified memories, on the other hand, are memories that they were able to plant inside your, your, your brain through, through the neural programming. So someone will, you'll have, you'll have suddenly you'll have a, a you know, a thought of being raped as a child. You'll, you'll become to believe that you were raped as a little girl by your father. And people will come up to you and say, that never happened. And you will swear that it did. Uh, so, there's a, so that's how the, the thought-triggered attacks work. They're using real, uh, that's why I called it earlier, a fabricated and falsified stream of energy. It contains, memories, the, the, this data is, is, is based upon a memory attack, blocking real memories and injecting the false and fabricated memories. Okay. okay. Thank you for the information. Um, are you ready for, uh, for a question, Brian? Sure, sure, yeah. But understand, these are memory references. Remember, I said choice reference patterns. It includes uh, uh, patterns of your previous choices, and those are memories. So, so you, you, you defeat these thought-triggered attacks. You defeat mind control by learning to read active memory. And we'll talk about that in a little while, active memory, okay, versus long-term Yeah, long I definitely memory. want to talk about um, solutions to this and how we can kind of overcome some of this. Uh, but we'll, we'll hold off on that for right now. Let's take a question. Hello, do you have a question for Brian? Hi, hi Brian. I, I had a question. I was wondering if we were in theory to, or hypothetically to just not like stay in our house for a while, not interact with anybody outside, 
and try to just you know, just lay in bed and meditate and try not to have any thoughts, do you think they would eventually become so bored with us as a target that they might eventually stop targeting us? No. No. Listen, isolating is, isolation is exactly what they want you to do. By staying in your house all day and, 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 and you're just, you're just, all you're doing is you're making it easier for the neuroprogramming to be effective. Because they, they, in order to be effective, they have, they have to capture your attention. The neuroprogramming, in order for the neuroprogramming to work properly, they have to minimize all external interference. I just talked about this a few moments ago. Okay, all external interference. And when you're engaged in, you know, your regular daily affairs and all the chaos and random events that go on in the normal person's life, Okay, all of that interferes with their technology, with their neuroprogramming. They want to stop all of that. So they force you back into your home by creating a hostile environment because it is a medical scientific fact that no matter how stable and rational you consider yourself to be, logical, whatever, no living organism, no living organism can survive in an environment which is constantly hostile. Okay, that's what, that's what they're doing. That's, that's another reason that organized stalking is, is designed to be uh, uh, bad, to, you know, uh, to, to traumatic, to, to force you back into an isolated environment where the neuroprogramming is more effective. So do not isolate. Do not so isolate. So it, it, would, it would be better for us then to just try to live our lives as best as we can rather than to be boring to them and hope they get bored. It's better just for ourselves to try to live our lives as best as we can with a given situation. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Brian, many of us targeted individuals have questions as to why, why us. Um, and, I, and, and I know about, you know, you could have been a whistleblower and, and all the different reasons, but is it solely that, uh, that, that targeted individuals came uh, or went against the control grid, or is there more to why they're doing this? Is it, is it about you know, the world domination or, is it, like, why us? No, no one did anything to deserve a lifetime of torture like this. So what, what is really behind this? Um, listen, the targeted individuals are chosen uh, because they fell into one of four categories. All targeted individuals fall into one of four categories, okay? And the reason you're, you're chosen or will be chosen for this technology for the training, research, and development of this technology is because you fell into one of those four categories. The first category are judicial targets. Those who have committed a crime or those they suspect may have committed a crime. The second category is extra judicial targets. And they may range, and that may range from those who they could sit, you know, they can't prove that they committed a crime but they suspect them of committing a crime to all the way to the other end of the spectrum, all the way to the other end of the spectrum where you're dealing with, you know, activists and whistleblowers, et cetera. That's called extrajudicial targets. The third category of targeted individuals is um, targets of opportunity. Targets of opportunity, basically, that's a very uh, vague area. It's a very large area, and just about everybody can fall in there. People, for example, who are randomly targeted for the purpose of science, for the purpose of you know, human experimentation, research, and development, like we talked about, those are targets of opportunity. And then the fourth category of all targeted individuals is called lucrative targets. And those are people who have uh, access to uh, or who may have possessed sensitive information or who may have access to sensitive positions. Uh, and so those four categories, judicial targets, extrajudicial targets, targets of opportunity, and lucrative targets are the four categories which all targeted individuals fall into. And the reason that you're targeted, the reason it's happening, okay, is because you fell into one of those categories. Okay. All right, thank you for that clarity. Okay, we do have another uh, question. Star eight, if you have a question. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Brian. I want to ask Brian um, a question about what they will do with a perpetrator that they sent to throw me into. A, a traumatic situation where I would completely fall apart. Now, it's obvious to me that through the organized stalking, what they've do, done is, is uh, studied all of my behavior to know that being married and, and being in a family situation is what I want most in life. So what they did was they mind-controlled me 
Once I got involved with a man to fall deeply, more deeply in love with him than ever in my life. And then they had him to withdraw from me and publicly shame me and withdraw from the relationship without explanation. Right. What do they do to him now? Okay. The reason that they do that, I I told you, trauma-based mind control cannot exist without trauma. Not just physical trauma, but psychological trauma. One of the things that they use are called honey traps. And they... They use honey traps to, they use relationships in order to provoke the victim into responses um, uh, from from violent responses to responses of, uh, they need to map out the entire, uh, all the vectors of of your personality. This is about three things, your will, intellect, and emotion, okay? That's your soul, that's your personality, the will, intellect, and emotion. They they know how to manipulate the five senses. Uh, Now they're trying to reverse engineer your will, intellect, and emotion. So they have uh, scenarios that they'll engage in, like good cop, bad cop, uh, or or they'll use honey traps to provoke you into, uh, to put you into situations where um, they can suddenly create trauma by introducing new variables. Because because that's what uh, that's what the hyper game theory is about. It's it's about applying game theory to decision tree models. It's about being able to alter any variable in the model, and then all, and by doing so, to alter the expected outcome. So just in order to tr- create trauma, they'll have someone come, uh, you know, into your life, some honey trap, and, and, and that person will, will, will be the trigger mechanism for, for, uh, for, you know, will be the mechanism for introducing trigger stimuli into your life in order for them to measure how effective their technology is working. They try to do that with me time and time again. So uh, another thing is, is good cop, bad cop. They'll, 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 and doesn't necessarily involve the police. What they'll do is that what they want to do is they want to instill hope and trust. They want to build relationships of, of love and and uh, you know trustworthiness and all the things that go go on with that. And then suddenly tear it down. Why? To inflict trauma, psychological trauma. When I worked for the Department of Defense, I had no idea this technology was was was, was working. But I was. They were targeting me the whole time. I had no idea this biocommunication technology even existed. But they were targeting my friends and family to create trauma, okay, through, through a process called influence mapping and negative associative conditioning. What they do is they find the people in your life, not just that you love, but whoever's important to you, okay? And in order to inflict trauma, they target those individuals with negative associative conditioning so that they, every time you come around them, okay, something bad happens. They get a headache. They get nausea. That's a directed energy attack. Or, you know, their car breaks down or their dog dies. It's called negative associative conditioning. And to the point, uh, the point you know, where the person that, that, that loves you or likes you begins to correlate those events, those bad negative events with your presence. They begin to correlate you to those negative events, and they begin to avoid you like the plague. They, oh. they, so they use influence mapping. Influence mapping is a business marketing strategy, okay? When a target, when a, when a business wants to target another company to get that company to buy their product or their service, what that company will do, it's called a B2B relationship, a business-to-business relationship, what that company will do is they'll find the people in the other company that they want to sell to who are the most important people in that company who have the most influence over the daily affairs of that company in order to try to get them to buy their product. They don't target the janitor. They don't target the administrative personnel because those people have no influence over the daily affairs of that company. They're not important. It's just not practical for them to do that. They target the people within the company who have the most influence, who, who are the most important people, who people who make decisions. Well, it's the same thing for you. They, the CIA and DIA hive mind team use influence mapping to map out the social circle that you live in, to see by data mining your emails and your phone calls, etc. cetera. They, they determine who are the people who are most important to you in your life. And then they begin to target those people Okay, and so those people want nothing to do with you or they turn against you and become your enemy. It's called, it's called influence mapping, and they use negative associative conditioning to turn those people away from you. So it may be a so, That makes sense. Maybe a best on, on, on top of contacting them directly, I do believe they contact the people as well. So how well, do I combat the trauma at this point? How do I combat the trauma? Listen. 
the way that you the way that you can can defeat their technology. There are many ways: uh, multitasking, thinking in multiple multiple thoughts at one time, thinking in multiple threads. When you think in multiple threads, there's no coherent pattern for them to download back into their their system as R and M data. They can't make sense of what they see on the screen. Or, uh, like I said, listening to music, spontaneity. Spontaneity absolutely disrupts their system. Okay, we, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about short term planning. I'm talking about not planning at all. I'm talking about speed of light uh, uh, actions in your life. So if you, if you, for example, if you think that you're going to the grocery store, immediately you pass the bank, you say, I'm going to pull into that thing. That's spontaneous. That's something they can't. Listen, they have to predict your choices. In order for the technology to be effective, they have to verify it. And the way they verify it is they predict your choices in advance. They try to use thought-triggered attacks to attack you during thought composition. And then once, you, once you, you know, you've, you've made up your mind, formulated your thoughts, and, and, and you've begun to engage in an action or act that sequence, they then have to predict that. They have to predict where you're going, what you're going to eat, you know, who you're going to hang around, who you're going to call, what, what you're going to watch on television. They need to predict that in advance because there's no other way for them to verify their technology. So being spontaneous defeats mind-controlled technology by disrupting the pattern. It doesn't matter that they know that you're being spontaneous. Okay, you know that, and they know that. The problem is the pattern is still broken. Okay, the pattern that they were using to verify their technology, and they got to start all over again. Okay, so these 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 attacks are based on phase, frequency, and amplitude of the stream of energy. The electromagnetic low frequency waves are targeting your brain with. All right, they got to start all over. They got to go back and, and and start a new scenario with uh these 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 these, these frequency attacks, for example. They don't force you to do anything. Now, they can, but that's not how my control is designed to work. They give you the desire to think or do something. You have a strong desire to think or do something, uh, to, to speak or think or act. You have a strong desire at higher levels. It's a high-frequency attack, and you have a low motivation or desire at baseline levels. That's a low-frequency attack. So what they do is, what happens is, they, they, they initiate these situational and conversational scenarios to pitch you into an action or access sequence. And then they begin targeting you in incremental levels. They'll start you out at baseline levels, and you'll have a low desire to speak, okay? And then you ignore the desire. Well, they're not going to just sit there. They're waiting for a response. The, the, the R&M supercomputer is probing you for a response. If you ignore it, then they're going to inject again and again and again, each time at a higher level, okay? And so pretty soon you have a strong desire to speak about God or football or whatever it is, okay? So there, there are many ways. You could redirection their... There's quenching. There's, uh, there's just so many different ways. We'll talk about that shortly. But you, you, know, you, can, you can defeat their technology by first learning, having a basic understanding of how it works and understanding that they're going to create trauma in your life on a daily basis because they're using trauma, not just physical trauma, but psychological trauma to map out the neural and sensory pathways of your brain and central nervous system. So, so these, these situational scenarios involve people you love, your family members and your friends. Uh, it's not enough that you respond. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. we can it's hear not, you. It's not enough. Um, it's not enough that you. It's not. It's not enough that you, the mind control victim, responds to to just any chaotic event, or random occurrence. You need to respond to their specific stimuli, or the verification process breaks apart. Again, verification. Without verification, there is no mind control. It doesn't exist. Okay. It'd be like the government using a particle beam cannon to target a galaxy five five to target a moon in a galaxy five, five, ten light years away, okay? Now, they could fire that particle beam cannon at that moon all day and night, but they'd never know if they hit their target because they can't see it. You see, for them, for their technology to work effectively, they need to keep you in 24-hour physical, physical surveillance of you to verify the technology. So by disrupting the verification process, you can defeat their, their technology. Well, Brian, I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing that all of this is really for uh, multiple reasons. I um, went to the doctor and I was diagnosed with chronic pain disorder, and I asked him what causes that, and he said trauma. And it made me realize that this, this, all of this targeting is really having physical, medical effects on the target. It's breaking us down, taking years off of our life. Right. Yeah. So that's another reason why they're doing it. Um, Hart, did you get your question answered? But, but they need they need to build coherent patterns. 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to put you on hold. Thank you. Go ahead, Brian, finish your thought. Are you there? Oh, I just put Brian on hold. Brian? Yeah, Brian? yeah, okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Go ahead and finish your thought. So, so one of the things that you can do in order to, to defeat their technology is learn to read active memory. This is what I call an active memory. It's actually short-term memory. Okay, there are many different uh, – when you talk about memory, it's, it's, it's a big a subject. There's residual memory. There's active memory. So we'll just keep it real simple. There's long-term memory and short-term memory. Okay, mind control is based on being able to attack you during thought composition as you're formulating your thoughts, preparing what you're going to do. Those are called thought triggered attacks. They're attacking you during the formulation of your thoughts, and these thought trigger attacks the speed of light. Okay, so you learn to read active memory. Where you, you begin to contrast your thoughts with, 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 with what's happening. Where, you, where, did, where did these powerful emotions come from? You know, this is not how I used to think. You begin to read, maintain situa- situational awareness of not just your environment, but of your mind, of your thoughts. You look for patterns. Remember, everything you do, I've said this in many emails, everything they do is based on patterns, on identifying and developing coherent patterns, from mind control, decoding thought patterns, to organizing. Stalking, choice reference patterns, it's all based on their ability to develop single coherent patterns of thought. Because only then can they can they make sense of what they see and integrate that information back into RNA data. So that's what you need to do. You need to, first of all, you need to learn active memory, how to read active memory. And active memory, short term memory, is anything less than thirty seconds. Anything longer is long term memory. Okay? This this technology is designed to target your short term memory. I'm not saying that they don't use, you know, falsified memory, the long-term memory uh, management. They do. But that's the second category of mind control, memory management, locking your, your real memories that you're thinking about and preparing to act. And as you're thinking, preparing to act, injecting the fabricated and falsified memory. Okay, so you learn to read active memory. You, you learn to look for patterns. Okay, and that's how you identify, you, that's how, by contracting your, your normal way of thinking with, with their artificial uh, remote neural manipulation, you're able to identify what, what, what's really uh, true, your real thoughts, and, and it's all memory. As soon as you think of it, it becomes, it becomes memory, okay, uh, from their uh, artificial impulse injections and, and memory attacks. So what they'll do is, I just, I just, I, I kind of forgot the question here. I'm just talking. But what they'll do is this. They'll use um, uh, uh, previous memories and they'll inject them back into your, your uh, memory and thought process. But then they'll use the desire, okay, to, for example, uh, memories of sexual encounters. So they want to create lust. They want to pitch you into an action or access sequence involving sex or masturbation, something like that. Uh, okay, so what they'll do is they, they inject the memory attack, and then they follow that up with an impulse injection it's called impulse sequencing. Well, if you learn to read active memory, you can begin to contrast their artificial impulse injections with your own normal, natural memory and thought process. So I would say the first thing you should do is learn to read active memory. Okay, sounds good. Okay, we have a couple of more questions. Would you mind? Please follow down to the convention center. Oh, no, no. I, I can go. Mission valid with each parent community. I'd like to remind all passengers to have a valid that's fare that's in the convention while we're in the college. While on board, Hold on. smoking or eating is permitted, and drinks must be kept in a spill-proof or sealed container. In consideration of other passengers, please do not place your feet on the seat. I'm sorry. I'm on a trolley heading uh, uh, into San Diego, uh, the old town. Um, okay, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. Next okay. Station, we're going to take another question. Go, go ahead. Okay, we're going to take another question. Hello? Yeah, have a question, Brian? Hello? 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 Hi. Do you have a question? Yes, Brian. Question, where does Jesus or Christianity come into the mix? Or um, or what can you tell about the machine when it has to do with Christians? Okay, I'm sorry, what was your name? Um, Jay. Jay, okay. The manipulation of the belief system of the mind control victim is very important for mind control technology. Not, okay. oh, hello, hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Not the, I'm not questioning about the belief system. I'm saying, for example, do you see that this technology is able to work more 
on non-believers or believers? Is there a stumbling block with, um, when it comes to a Christian? Will the technology work, or is it harder for it to work on a Christian? With the I'm technology, trying to answer, are they I'm trying to answer. I'm trying to answer. I'm trying to answer your question. Okay, okay. 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 Remember, there are other people on the phone, too, so I'm trying to give you yeah, a general Yeah, I definitely answer. want okay. to hear what you were going to say about the police. Go ahead okay. with that, please, and then go on to Jay's question. So, so one of the things that they do is they target your, your belief system. And the reason that they target your well, the, one, of the, one of the ways that they target your belief system is first determine what religion you are by building a profile. So you may not even be religious. You may be an atheist, in which case, you know, they can't use Buddha or Allah or, or some other, you know, false god. They've got to use some other stimulus, such as aliens or something like that. Okay, so they find out what your belief system is, and then they, they, the, the, the uh, remote neural attacks are designed to mimic that belief system. That they, they find out what your God of choice is, and then they use B2K, voice of God weapons, or synthetic telepathy to make you think God is speaking with you. Um, so this happened in 1991. If you remember, in 1991, uh, tens of thousands of Iraqi soldiers suddenly surrendered in the first Gulf War with their hands raising them and their weapons dismantled. And, and a reporter came to them later, and he asked some of them, he said, why, I understand why you surrendered. But why did you dismantle your weapons first? And, the, and all of the uh, Iraqi soldiers said, Allah told us to. Allah said that before we could surrender, we had to dismantle our weapons. Well, that wasn't Allah. It wasn't their God Allah, the false God Allah. It was the CIA, it was the CIA and the DOD. They were using, they were manipulating the belief systems of these Muslims to make them believe the God of their choice was speaking to them to pitch them as some type of action or access secrets. In this case, it was the dismantling of their weapons before they surrendered. So, so the, 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 uh, the targeting of, of, a, of a mind control victim's belief system is done for, for, for one of two reasons, to subdue or to radicalize. They either want to subdue your belief system because they always, or they want to radicalize your belief system because they always do what's most difficult. When it comes to the training, research, and develop, development for mind control technology, they do what's most difficult with a mind control victim. Once they build a profile of you, they determine what your religion is, what your belief system is, okay? And then they do what's most difficult. So they would never, so they would never, I'm near, I'm near the water here in San Diego, uh, to, hear, to hear some loud noises. So they would never, for example, turn a bisexual into a homosexual. It really doesn't further their research do that. They do what's most difficult. They'll turn a heterosexual into a homosexual. They'll turn a Christian into an atheist, a Muslim into a Jew, etc. Why? Why go, go through all of that? For one reason, to determine why target a belief system a person's religion to begin with, Jesus or some other uh, uh, religion, a person, to determine what you, the targeted individual, can maintain as truth. Okay? To determine what you or a group of people, in this case, you know, I use the example of tens of thousands of Iraqi soldiers, to determine what they could maintain as truth. So, they tar uh, so the, the belief system the tar being targeted, uh, uh, so then they, they, they target me daily with this. They go after my belief system, okay? But if you're not uh, a Christian or you're not religious, you know, it would be some other stimulus, such as alien. So you'll walk outside your door one night, and you'll look up and there'll be a UFO over your house. Okay, but it's not a UFO; it's a hologram. And then they'll be, you know, after that they'll be incrementally they'll include, uh, they'll increase the the, the the remote neural attack targeting your memory and thought process, and suddenly the, the aliens will start speaking with you, etc. Okay, this is done for one reason: to to determine, to measure what you, the targeted individual, can maintain as truth. So the answer to your question is, it's done for two reasons. The reason they do it is, is two reasons: one is to subdue or to radicalize. The second is to determine to what the targeted individual can maintain as truth. Hello. Okay, Jay, Jay, did that answer your question, or did you? Hello. Speak more specific? Hello. Yes, I, I see you're under, you're talking about the brainwashing aspect, but a simple question: Do they have the technology to look at a look at someone and tell whether or not they're Christian, whether it's through their frequency, their body chemicals? Do they have that type of technology? No. No, they can't just look at you and tell you're a Christian. They, they have to watch you. That's why surveillance. No, I'm saying, necessary. I'm saying, I'm going, I'm going off the technology part. Do they have That's the technology that they can? Right, right. You I know. mean, you say, that, no. you, you say that they can read your mind frequency, your body frequencies, and everybody's frequency is different, is, is not identical. 
But right. if there's something that happens to an individual when he becomes a Christian that they can see with their technology, that they see that it's harder to attack that person. Listen, uh, Dr. Robert Duncan was re- talked about this in his book, Project Soulcatcher. He said that while other uh, religions are, are easily manipulated with this technology, he said Christianity, and he's not a Christian. He said Christianity has some defenses. And one of those defenses is, of course, the, the doctrines of the faith. Uh, so they can't just look at you and say, this person's a Muslim or a Jew or a Christian. There's no, the technology cannot do that. Before they, can, before they can read your thoughts, okay, they have to do the cognitive model of your brain, and that takes time. So by your behavior, okay, by profiling your behavior and your habits, okay, they determine what your religion is, if you have any or not. It's not possible for them to, to use a stream of energy to interface with your mind your memory and thought process and say, this person is Christian, this person is Jesus. That's just not possible. Not, at least not yet. Because they can't read your mind until, until they can build a cognitive uh, a model of your brain. It's just not possible. But, right. you, but, yeah. you, but you did just say that um, Dr. Uh, Robert Duncan said that it is harder to uh, affect Christians because of their faith, correct? The doctrines of the faith are what Dr. Robert Duncan was referring to, but Dr. Robert Duncan is not a Christian. Any, any born-again Christian will tell you it's the Holy Spirit, okay? But mm-hmm. remember, these are scientists who really, they care about raw research. They care about the data, okay? So there's no, they can read your mind, but it takes a while. It doesn't happen overnight. And then from, from being able to read your thoughts and contrasting what they can see on their screen uh, from, from, from your behavior, they're able to determine what, what religion you are. Listen, if they can't make sense of what they see on their screen, they have to revert back to your past activity. Okay, this is about this is about your choice reference patterns, and those include your religious beliefs. And and one of the things that they do with B2K is they use these voice of God weapons to manipulate people, uh, their belief systems, because these, these belief systems are very important as far as training, research, and development is concerned. They want you to become dependent. Okay on um, their impulse injections, their memory attacks, et cetera, meaning they want you to believe that these artificial injections are your own, that you're, you're the one that wants the peanut butter, when in fact they're injecting, they don't care anything about peanut butter, they care about their technology. But they want you to believe that it's your, you're the one because, well, you just love peanut butter and chocolate, okay? So you're suddenly having this desire for peanut butter and chocolate, and you keep ignoring it. But it keeps coming back stronger and stronger in a looping pattern every five minutes, okay? Each time the desire is stronger, okay? That's a high-frequency attack. Started out with a low-frequency attack. You had a basic motivation for chocolate and peanut butter, and each time you ignored it, the system was probing for a response until now you have a high-frequency attack, which is a, a strong desire for peanut butter and chocolate. So they want you to become – and I say this is, this is very important. I'm just using peanut butter as an example. It could be God or some other uh, – it could be whatever religion you, you think you have, okay? They, they need you to become dependent on what they're doing, on their impulse injections, uh, and when I say impulse injections, I'm talking about love, hate, lust, fear, et cetera, okay? And they need you to become dependent upon the R&M system. When I say r and I mean remote neural monitoring, remote neural manipulation. And once you become dependent upon that system, or at least they think you are, okay, or they believe in those responses that they're seeing, they think they're consistent, okay? Once that happens, that's when they begin to fabricate these subconscious responses. And one of the things that they'll do is they'll, 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 they'll fabricate subconscious responses to get you to think that God is speaking to you. Okay, that, that, those are those are called indicators. They're, they'll use anything. I mean, they'll use honesty, dishonesty, uh, anxiety, whatever. Okay, but they want right. the idea. The idea is to mimic the cognitive behavior of the mind control victim, so that they think the fabricated responses that they're receiving are their own, and then to get you to do something. So, so for example, uh, uh, the uh, uh, Aaron Alexis. Let's just use Aaron Alexis. Aaron Alexis was a Buddhist. Obviously, Buddhists don't run around killing people. Okay. All right, that doesn't happen. Okay, so they target they target your belief system. Okay, to get you to believe that this is the doctrine of uh, what you need to do and follow, and this is what God wants you to do. Okay, it's only when you become dependent upon the R and M system that they use the subconscious responses to begin to fabricate responses to make you believe that God is speaking with you. All done for one or two reasons: to subdue or to radicalize you, to determine what you can maintain as true. Now, a lot of us, a lot of us get, get spiritual attacks in, a, in another way. Um, I get attacks in my sleep where I feel like I'm being smothered, which would be, um, it would be called like sleep paralysis. But if something feels very demonic about when, when okay. the attacks happen to me, 
So I'm wondering, is that something that these computers are capable of doing? Yes. This yes. The computer is monitoring. The supercomputer is monitoring your emotional state at all times. Okay. That, that, that's what they listen. That's what remote neural manipulation is about. All right. I'm, being able to monitor and based off of the, the information that's able to capture to fabricate stories based, based on whatever, whatever it is you're thinking. So the re remote neural monitoring system is designed to capture in, in a speed of light whatever it is you're thinking and then to download or inject back into your mind as you're thinking stories. Artificial remote neural, these remote neural attacks are just stories uh, or visual or verbal entrainment to, to make you believe God is speaking to you. Okay, that's how they shot. That's how they achieve direct behavioral control over the victim. Okay, remember, Mike told us about three things. It's about censorship. It's about memory management. It's about direct behavioral control. Part of the direct behavioral control means they want to shape your thoughts and behavior with this technology. And the way they do that is they get you to become dependent upon their system. So okay. whether it's restricting, whether it's restricting your thoughts. Jay, does your question been answered, Jay? Well, kind of, kind of. But, I, I mean, I understand, like, you're a smart guy and you have a lot of information on it, but I'm going off of it, the, the Christian aspect of it. Like, you said that there's four reasons why they pick, uh, they put you on a program as you talk, as you are targeted individuals. But two of those reasons won't apply to some people, and, some, and, and four, all four of those reasons really won't apply to nobody because there are people, targeted individuals, they feel like they've been put on this program at birth. Like me, I can go back to the age of two and three years old, and I knew that I was on the targeted individual program. So why, I mean, how or why would they pick me at that, um, or pick people at, at, such, at birth? At such a young age. Program? Okay, right. Well, I told you, you're a target of opportunity. Okay, thank you, you Jay. I'm going to put you on hold while he answers your question. You. Okay, okay. I, you're a target. You fall into the category known as targets of opportunity. Okay? You're targeted for training, research, and development from birth on. Okay, that's why. That's the reason. Okay, you fell under one of those four categories, judicial, extrajudicial, targets of opportunity, or lucrative targets. In your case, you know that you weren't running around robbing banks as a baby, okay? So uh, you didn't, you're not a judicial target. You know you weren't an, uh, a whistleblower or an activist at the age of two or three years of old, old so you know you're not an extrajudicial target. You know that you know, as you were entering the first grade, you didn't possess you know, sensitive information or, or, or ha hold a sensitive position, et cetera, so you want a lucrative target. You fell into Category 3, targets of opportunity. Also, um, I believe, well, I know that people are um, targets because they're affiliated with someone because, uh, for instance, my children. My children were born into it because I'm target. Right. So I guess, right. I, yes, okay. There, there is a genetic link between some of the targeting. There is. Uh, for the purposes of the research uh, and development of, of this technology, they do target family members. They don't just target one person. They may target multiple generations. Uh, I don't have enough data on that to tell you, you know, in, in, in your situation whether that's true or not. I don't, obviously, I don't know you. Okay, but understand that all of this, that what they're doing, especially when we're talking about they're targeting your faith, uh, they, they, they're targeting your faith based on, 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 on scripts using situational and conversational scenarios. The only determine whether the neural programming to, to subdue or to radicalize you, okay, is working or not. So they engage in, stri in, in what are called scripts, Dr. Duncan calls it scripts. Uh, I, I call them situational scenarios, conversational scenarios, okay? I call them street theater, okay? But the objective is to create extreme psychological trauma, fear, paranoia, et cetera, okay, to, to, because that's what, that's what, I mean, that's how the, the, the technology is designed to work for it to be effective so traumatize you in, in, in a sense that you can no longer function in society, causing you to begin to physically and psychologically shut down. And multiple people may be targeted. There may be multiple. They're often, you know, the, the research has to be random. So that, like when they do drug tests, you know, uh, they, 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 need, they need to choose a large pool of people to do the research on. Otherwise, the, 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 the research is skewed. It's just skewed. They, they, you know, they need a random t uh, pool of test subjects, okay? But other times, there's a genetic link involved. They want to see how the technology works through that genetic link. Um, but again, it's all designed to cause you to shut down physically and psychologically, uh, to, to, to begin to force you, especially, listen, I'm, I'm answering your question, especially from family and friends, to isolate you, especially from any support network that you may have. Okay? That's why, that's why trauma-based minds, listen, you know, they're, they're not using this. This is a weapon system. 
Okay, this is neuro warfare. The revolutions that are going on, Arab Spring, all those revolutions in the Arab world, uh, Ukraine, okay, Belarus, uh, all these Arab countries. Notice that, notice that the countries where all this revolution is occurring are, are Russian allies. Notice that, okay? Notice that. The Ukraine, for example, all right? This is neuro warfare between the Russians and the Americans. That's what's happening. <laughs> it's a weapon system. It's a weapon system. I've, t- I've told people before, but because for, you know, there may be new people on your call, I'll say it again. This movie works the opposite of Clockwork Orange. Clockwork Orange, in Clockwork Orange, the um, scientists, I, I, I never really saw the movie. I just saw parts of it. Uh, but uh, I read about it, and, and basically the, the theme of the movie was this. Scientists were trying to take a, a violent person and turn them into a peaceful person. Take a violent criminal and turn them into someone who would shut down in the face of extreme violence. And to do that, they used hypnotism, behavior, modica- behavior modification, etc. Okay? Well, they failed. But that was the objective of the movie, to turn a violent person into a peaceful person who would shut down in the face of ex- you know, extreme violence. Well, so this, this technology, trauma-based mind control, is the exact opposite of the movie Clockwork Orange. It's a weapon system. It's designed to turn the trauma-based mind control victim, the mind control victim, into a weapon who will inflict destruction and damage upon others or his community or, will, or who himself will self-destruct. Okay? So they take, in this case, they do the exact opposite of the movie Clockwork Orange. They take a good person and turn him into a bad person. Or they take a bad person and turn him into an evil person. The objective is to turn you into a weapon, to cause you to inflict destruction upon others or to self-destruct. That's why they go after your family members. Okay, I remember I talked about influence mapping and the negative associate conditioning earlier. Now, those are some of the tactics that they use. But it's all done to isolate you. Because they can't isolate you from everyone in the world. They, they can't isolate you from every person on earth. That's just not possible, nor is it practical. In order to isolate a victim, all you need to do is, is, is to isolate him from the people in his or her life that are important to him, that have the most influence over them, such as the pastor or the teacher or, you know, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, or their wife or their husband, whomever, okay? Simply. That, that's what they do. They target those people to isolate you. They create trouble for those people every time you come around until those people are convinced you're just, you're bad luck, you know? And those people begin to correlate all the negative stuff that's happening in their lives with, with your presence every time you come around, something bad happens. And they want to stay away from you. That's how they isolate you. So the reason they're targeting your family it's not just because there might be a genetic link, and that's important in, with regard to their research. It's also to isolate the mind control victim. Interesting. Okay, so we'll take another question. Okay, star eight, if you have a question or a comment. It's really interesting what, he, what he's talking about because, because the, 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 the CIA and DIA, they do use these haunted houses and demon possessions. I wrote, I wrote about this. They do use it. Um, and, and, again, it's to, deter- it's to determine whether the pastor and the community can main- what they can maintain is true. Not to radicalize them, okay? It's to determine what the community or people who are involved can maintain is true. That's it. So, you know, objects may begin to move in the house or they're uh, on their own. That ha- it happens with, you know, uh, objects suddenly just moving. And they accomplish. It's called synthetic telekinesis. They use streams of energy to move objects. They may move your furniture around, okay, mm-hmm. using the, this technology, all right, streams of energy. Um, they don't always have to break into your house to rearrange your furniture. Okay, again, all of that is done uh, for, for that reason, to isolate you, to cause you to physically and psychologically no longer be able to function and shut down. Okay, I just unmuted someone. Do you have a question or a comment? Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Let's okay, speak. my question My question is with this, this new form What, what is your name? Who's, speak, who's speaking, please? Kimber Conter. Kimber? Kimbrick. Okay. Hunter. Okay. okay. Go right ahead, please. My question is, with this technology, um, seem, since it's baseline to a computer and all of our brain synapses have been mapped, uh, why is it that some people can feel this technology and see it and others cannot? Okay, good question. Um for example, that's, that's one of the main differences between state-of-the-art mind control and trauma-based mind control. Uh, but this technology can work at lower intensities, you know, and you may only notice it at higher intensities, meaning torture. Okay, so so if the technology is working properly and the person's state-of-the-art mind control 
and then he's, he's ignorant of the fact he's being targeted with this technology, then they wouldn't want to increase the trauma. But trauma-based mind control is the exact opposite. It's brute force mind hacking. So trauma is necessary. But yeah, the technology can be achieved at lower intensity. But understand that trauma-based mind control is about, the brute, about brute force. Okay, they, they need to use extreme pain and trauma, psychological and physical trauma, to force you, the mind control victim, to disassociate from reality, to shut down. The brain, your brain, okay, it automatically, instinctively protects itself from extreme trauma by, by fragmenting. What I mean is everybody is born with a core personality. Okay, by the time you're six or seven, your core personality is complete. Now, it's going to modify introvert, extrovert, etc. It's going to modify and evolve over the years to your early to your early 20s. Okay, but that core personality is set. Okay, what they need to do in order to force you to disassociate from reality is they need to use extreme brutal trauma, physical and psychological trauma, to the point that the brain instinctively begins to protect itself from that extreme trauma by fragmenting. By the core, the core personality fragmenting into multiple personalities. That's how they artif- that's how they create artificially induced multiple personality disorder. But that's not always necessary, depending upon which program you've been placed in. So that so if you, if you're not you're not being tortured when others are, it doesn't mean that they're just, you know, they like you and they're taking it easy on you. It means that you're in a different program. You're probably not a monarch victim. Okay, you're probably you know they they have they have all kinds of programs. They have omega programming, which is suicide programming. They have uh, 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 what is it called? Cat program? I can't remember the name of it. Uh, where they, they use, they turn lust, uh, a person's uh, lust into, an, they just give them an insatiable appetite for sex and lust. And then they use that as a weapon. Uh, I, I think that's a uh, sex kitten. Is that the sex kitten programming? Well, I can't remember. No, but I, it is. I can't remember the name of it. Okay. But but the, but the point is, uh, uh, the, the answer to your question is, is this. Okay. That's the that's long answer. I could keep going. The short answer is this. Mind control can be achieved at lower intensity, so it's not necessary to court you, uh, and you're only going to notice that, that you are the victim of mind control when, when it's at higher intensities. And when I say higher intensities, I mean torture. Okay, uh, Kimberly, has your question been answered? Okay, another question. Go ahead. Is this program or this weapon designed to murder people? Because at this point. Uh, I became a target in 2009. I began to notice the different odysseys around my home and the people that I cared about, almost as if they were being programmed to emotionally break down to fall apart with each other or play one another against each other. And like Jay was asking earlier, is this particular device being used non-effective on Christians more so than those that profess not to have an actual relationship in Christ. That that was his actual question. Do, do this device affect believers less in, in the ability to control them um, than those who don't have an active relationship with the Holy Spirit? And back on topic to what I was saying, um, around about 2010 is when I got the physical trauma. They induced a physical trauma on me. Uh, it didn't really work. It just made me more bold and aggressive in the things of God and, and humanity because I'm not used to violence. But is this program designed to just murder people because you don't fall into the category of being uh, emotionally manipulated or controlled? Yes. The answer to your question is yes. And they have ways of doing it. They're slow kill and quick kill. Okay, slow kill technology. They have a, uh, one, one of the weapon systems that they have uh, is uh, uh, Satan. Satan, uh, meaning silent assassination to an amplified neuron. Okay? They cause you to have a heart attack. They cause you to have congestive heart failure. They cause you to have a stroke. It's a, it's, it's a weapon system. Remember, I told you, this is a weapon system. Okay? It's, it's basically primarily, it's premised upon neuro warfare. But they have methods that they, they use for training, research, and development. They do use people to, ha- uh, to create uh, uh, heart attacks or to create strokes. And the point at which the, you, the, the mind control victim, suffers a heart attack, congestive heart failure, stroke, et cetera, that is an important metric in their technology. So they determine how best to kill people slowly with uh, as much plausible deniability as possible. Now, with mind control, generally it's, it, it, it's designed to kill you by using your own mind to get you to kill yourself. Call it, or I just mentioned one of the ways, it's called a mega programming, suicide programming. 
Okay, well, there are other ways to do it. Okay, they can they can they, they amplify whatever destructive habits you have, and they amplify those destructive habits, turning them into a weapon to be used against you. So if you smoke, they make you smoke more. If you eat, they make you eat more. If you drink, they make you drink more. If you have a, a, a an anger problem, they'll make you more angry, causes you to burn with a white hot rage. You're just mad enough to kill somebody. Okay, whatever whatever bad habits that you have, they amplify those with this technology. Okay, and then they use they, they use that as a weapon against you. So this slow kill and quick kill. All right. So it depends on what program you place into. But the answer to your question is yes, and that's how they do it. Okay, uh, Kimber, come on for town hall. Thank you. Are you there? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna put you on hold. Thank you. You are. And to answer to answer um, Kimbrick and Jay's question about uh, whether or not this program is less effective on Christians, I, my answer would be yes. I do believe because our faith sustains us that um, it is not as effective because we know how to go to God in prayer. And uh, and we believe and we have faith. So I, I personally believe that this program is not as effective on Christians. You know, if, if your demon, if your demon possessed, and a man of God can get to you fast enough, they can they can exercise that demon out of you. But there's a scientist who said that there's there's once this technology gets in your body, there's no exercising it out of you. Okay, um, but understand that that remote neural manipulation is designed to 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 fool you with regard to your, the doc. The people who have no, have very little understanding of the doctrines of their faith, of their religion, and who have no understanding of biocommunications warfare, of this type of communication technology, uh, synthetic telepathy, uh, the voice of God, etc., uh, they're easily more easily manipulated. People who are have, uh, are doctrinally found, born again Christians who know the Bible, who understand, then it's more difficult to turn a, a good person into a bad person with technology. But can can they can they? Uh, uh, use it to destroy your faith? Some cases, yes. Some cases, no. You know, it depends on... They, they do target the frontal cortex of your brain with streams of energy at higher frequencies in order to try to subdue your faith. Okay? But again, they may, they may have a, uh, the total opposite in, in store for you. They may be trying to radicalize your faith. But they will do it by targeting the frontal cortex region of your brain with, with streams of, of electromagnetic energy. Okay? To subdue or radicalize your faith. But, but but people who are born again who understand that uh, just like Jesus said, do not be deceived. People who are born again and, and I have, have a good understanding of the doctrines of their faith, it becomes more difficult for the technology to turn a, a good person into a bad person than it is for them to turn a bad person into an evil person. Okay. Thank you for that. For those of you just joining us, we're talking to Brian, too, and Brian, too, is letting us know how these conscious computers are some people may call them supercomputers, um, interact in um, how they uh, work into our targeting experience. Yes, Let's talk talking. about how they, how they interact. Let's talk about uh, how they, the difference between remote neural monitoring and remote neural manipulation, because the two are not the same, okay? So, so, so obviously, you know, when they're, when they're monitoring you and they're capturing memories, et cetera, in, in the silent monitoring period, uh, then they, they, at, the, at that point when they, they, when they move from, uh, remote neural monitoring to remote neural manipulation where people could become confused, okay? Everything, again, is based on patterns. I told you it's all based on patterns. So it's based on their ability to, to interpret your thoughts as you're thinking them, okay? And that's called thought composition before, before you're, as you're preparing to act. So it may be some type of religious uh, uh, thing that you're doing, okay? They want you to pray or they want you to, uh, to become a suicide bomber or whatever, okay? So what they'll do is they target you during thought composition. And, but at that same time, they, they, while well, they're trying to influence your reference choices, remember I told you, choice reference pattern. Those are called reference choices. Active memory is based on reference choices, the formulation of reference choices. So while they're doing they gotta, they got to predict that. they got to predict what you're going to do during thought composition. And if you don't do it, their technology fails. So what they're doing is they're mapping patterns. And they're mapping, they're using impulses and identifiers to map those patterns. Remember, it's all about being able to determine, uh, for example, your, your habits. When I talk about habits, I'm talking about composition habits to predict how you think or, or, or act. And then they need you to, as you, uh, during thought composition, just before, that's before you prepare to act. So if they want you to engage in some type of religious crusade or whatever, then that's how they do it. They target you during thought composition. They're using identifiers. They're using patterns as identifiers. Okay. And I often say impulse injection, impulse injection. Really, I should say impulse sequencing because you're dealing with multiple artificial injections 
not just one. So, so it's not, it's, they, the technology is designed to fool you. And people who have a, a better understanding of their faith, if Jesus tells them to go kill somebody, they're going to know that this, this, is not, this is not Jesus. Okay? But, they're, but again, they're using patterns with impulses and identifiers based on your previous choices. Okay? And using that to manipulate your, your thought composition habit. So as you think are prepared to do something, whatever it is you're going to do, okay, they need to be able to inject a speed of light at that moment. And that's what the RNM system is designed to do, to define and map those choice references. Now, that, that may either depend on your cooperation or your ignorance, either one, okay? If you're not cooperating then, and, and they can't make sense of what they see on this screen, then they've got to revert back to your past activity. But, yes, the, 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 answer, the answer is yes, uh, it can happen. And, and that's how remote neural manipulation targets you. They, they map patterns, okay, patterns of your previous choices, choice reference patterns with impulses and identifiers. They're, these are memory attacks. They're using their own memories against you, okay, and they're using false, falsified memories as well. But it's much easier to fool a person when you've captured uh, during the silent monitoring period when the, when the supercomputers captured memories about your childhood and then as you're sitting in your living room 20 years later, they start injecting these memories. Well, those are your memories, so you automatically identify them Identify with them, okay. But the problem is those are those are artificial memory attacks, okay. They're, they're the constant injection of that memory over and over should be a red flag for you to be able to determine this is a pattern here, okay. That's how you identify your own normal uh, memory and thought process from their artificial mem uh, uh, memory management attacks and impulse injection. So so they'll engage in these situational and conversational scenarios to see if you'll respond to the neuro programming. But those situational and conversational scenarios are always going to be those scenarios are always going to be based on what they believe you will respond to. They have to first get you to respond before the technology can work properly. It's called response statistics. That's why they're provoking you constantly. It may be some mundane thing you know, they want to walk up and ask you the time or for money or direction. Okay? Or it may be something that's very important to you, like family or friends or God. They don't care. Whether it's good or evil, it makes no difference to them as long as you respond. Because their technology is based upon being able to take those responses and integrate them back into RNM data. And they can't do that if they can't make sense of single coherent patterns which they see on their screen. Okay, thank you for that. We have uh, we have a couple of other people that have questions, so I will unmute someone. Star eight, if you have a question for Brian. Hello. I have a very um, simple question. Can okay, this your name, please. What is your name, please? Lynn in Vermont. Is it possible okay. to stop get this technology to get this black ops shut down? I, listen, people always ask me this question. They think I'm negative. I'm not negative. I'm just a realist. Okay. Uh, under the present scenario, no. Uh, for any government to admit to this level of assassination and torture would cause that government to fall overnight, okay? So they're not going to, I mean, they're not going to let this come out, and they'll kill whoever tries to expose it. Okay? Or if, they can't, if they can't discredit it, they'll kill them. One of the two, how about, okay? How about, there, there are good people in the government who are trying to stop this. So you, are you lumping them in with um, people that they're going to kill? Listen, in the CIA, I can't tell you about the CIA as much as I can about the Department of Defense because I, I didn't work for CIA. I was only a low-level contractor with DOD, okay? But there is a level of fear, okay, and it is real. And they know what will happen to them and what will happen to their family if they expose this. Okay, that, listen, you know, this has been going on since the 1970s. Did anybody ever go to jail over MK Ultra? No. Was anybody ever compensated over MK Ultra? Thousands of people involved, tens of thousands of victims. Was one person ever compensated? No. Some scientist jumped out of a window, but it wasn't based on mind control that his family was compensated. Yeah, no, nobody ever was brought to justice because of this. And that was MK Ultra, and that was, what, 40 years ago? So under the present scenario, the answer is no. It would take a whistleblower, a credible whistleblower, with hard data to be able to prove this, and they would kill him. The courts do not lack the, the courts do not have the expertise, okay, uh, to be able to uh, to understand this technology. First of all, in order to stop it, you have to educate the public. Okay? I, I, I'm, and, I, I'm afraid I didn't make myself clear. Is it possible for the good people in the government to shut this down? No, 
I just told oh, you. Oh, oh, you know. Oh, oh, not, okay. not, in the, not, in, not in the present scenario. Okay? okay. Because, because, because if they said something, they'd be killed. There's a great deal of fear in the CIA, okay, and, and other uh, DIA, I'm sure. Okay? But, but the point is, under the present scenario, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I know people don't want to hear that. Uh, and I, I, I'm not saying there's no hope. I said there was no hope. And when this lady, this sweet lady on the phone, she said, Brian, with well, Jesus, there's always hope. And she was right. I, I, there's nothing I can say. She was right. You know, but he's the only person that can help you now, Jesus. Uh, in the future, 20 years from now, people will believe that these, these atrocities happened. But they'll, they'll justify that it happened by saying that we're a better society today. We're a kinder, more gentler society. We'd never let that happen 20 years from now. Yeah, it happened 20 years ago, but, okay? So, so the answer, again, uh, no. Under the present scenario, it's not going to stop. Okay. I'll put you on hold, and we'll go to the next question. And you know, Brian, I was thinking, imagine imagine all the lawsuits the government would have. Well, you know, they got all these laws about phones. Phone. You know, phones and all these other methods of communication. But there's very little real hard legislation passed to, 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 even, uh, to even deal with these atrocities. You know, uh, the, the courts don't have the expertise, and the people involved in, 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 in Congress, they don't have the expertise. They don't even know it's a, it's a black ops project. They don't even know that, you know, they're, they're, how would they make legislate about a program they have no idea exists, you know? Uh, listen, what they do is they, gain, they engage in what's called disinformation and misinformation. Disinformation is lies. Misinformation is half-truth. You know, a lie is much easier to spot than a half-truth, okay? But they also engage in blocking tactics. They also engage in misdirection tactics. Misdirection tactics designed to prevent a credible discussion of the issue. So even if the public would have addressed the issue, okay, they would, the government throws out all these, they just flood. That's why they hate the Internet so much. The government, the Pentagon hates the Internet because they can't control it, it's because it's too decentralized. You know, they control mainstream media. It's freedom of the press. That's a big illusion. That's a bunch of lies. There's no freedom of the press, okay? But even if the press were to get a hold of it, the information would never be allowed to leak because the government controls the media, the mainstream media. Okay, but the, 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 you know, the alternative media on the Internet, it, it, they can't control it because it's too decentralized. So what they do is they flood the Internet with all this disinformation, lies and misinformation, half truth, in order to drown out the truth. They flood the Internet with all this disinformation and misinformation. So people are forced back into the mainstream media. So people can't rely on those alternative media sites on the Internet as a source of truth, and they have no choice but to, but to I think Duncan spoke about this, in his book, to, to, to revert back to mainstream media where information is more easily controlled and manipulated. Same thing with these talk show forums. FFCHS is a forum. Okay? It, it, this phone call right now is a forum. It's a conference call. Okay? They heavily manipulate the forums. They target the forums heavily with misinformation and disinformation. Okay? Because they know, and you, you'll see them constantly interrupting the speaker or blocking the speaker. That's just one tactic that's designed to prevent the listening audience from understanding what they hear. Okay, they have various means to stop this from ever getting out, and if it did get out, they killed the people that tried to expose it. That's true. Very true. Okay, uh, Florida, I just unmuted you. Do you have a question or a comment? On the subject matter of hope, because you have a lot of um, listening audience tonight, they didn't they didn't tune in to hear somebody say uh, under the present scenario there is no hope, especially with many of them professing to be believers of Christ when he said that he is the hope. And we keep talking about the government like it's some type of alien entity when it's the people that we, um, constituents, elected into office, whether we had knowledge and wisdom that they would do the, the right job or not. And yet these are the same people that at one point or another came under the influence of satanic uh, entities to write into law and to allow these type of programs that have gotten out of hand, um, is there, to give the, the, the listening audience a better sense of hope, is there some way to defeat the neural links to the main computer, since they're using yes. our brain as a computer, uh, like a Wi-Fi link, uh, 
that they can begin to practice to use in their faith in Christ to bring down the system themselves individually so that no one's life is put into peril by going to their leaders at this point since we've heard the, the absolute truth that even they are afraid of this entity um, any longer with the wrong objectives. The answer to your question is, Jeff, there are things that you can do to defeat the technology. Um, there are four methods of shielding, okay? People talk about shielding a lot. Well, there are four main methods to shield from this technology. There are many methods to shield. But from this technology, there are four main methods. Pa passive shielding, mental shielding, chemical shielding, and what's called electronic jamming. Okay? Of the four, the only one that we know that would work for sure is electronic jamming, but it's not possible for targeted individuals to electronically jam these signals because the, tech, the equipment alone, the hardware alone, would cost a fortune. And targeted individuals do not possess the skill and expertise to operate such hardware to begin with. In order, this is the first, this is the one, uh, electronic jamming does work, but in order for, for a person to be able to jam the signal, they first will have to be able to isolate the signal. And this, this, this supercomputer, the RNM system, which is attacking you, is not just, it's not just automated, it's also active and adaptive. So you're, you're dealing with passive materials that you're trying to shield from an active system. You find out real quick that that passive materials and passive shielding is useless against an active system. Now, I'm not saying that don't shield, you know, if it gives you some, some relief at certain frequencies, yeah, sure, you should shield, okay? But understand that the only present, the only present defense that they have right now to shield against this technology is electronic jamming, and we don't have the hardware, and we don't have the expertise to operate it. The other three, passive shielding, uh, works very, it's, it's almost totally ineffective, but some people claim it does relieve their symptoms to some extent. And that's just the use of passive materials like, like metal and, and uh, Teflon and, and other uh, 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 materials to shield uh, Faraday cages, et cetera. That's called passive shielding. And, it, you know, it does have a, a limited effect at certain frequencies. The problem is as soon as you're able to, the system is active and adaptive, meaning it's going to vary immediately at speed of light. Whatever uh, frequency you're able to shield from, it's just going to automatically, at speed of light, it's going to increase the phase, the frequency, and the amplitude of that stream, or it's going to decrease. It's going to tend to be attacked. The system is designed to be adapted to whatever you do to try to counter it, okay? And, and, and again, it's, it, using the hypergame theory and mathematic model to, to force you into a series of counter, counter moves. But understand, passive shielding is very limited. The third, the second is, is uh, uh, mental shielding, and, and the fourth is chemical shielding. Chemical shielding does work to some extent when you're talking about, you know, uh, medicine to help you relax, such as Ativan and uh, I don't know what, what all, Valium and all that. But understand that although there is some limited effect with those medications to help you, they're also highly addictive. And you can become you know, in a much worse situation, especially when the technology is designed to amplify whatever destructive habit you have. They'll make a drug out of, that, drug out of, out of you real quick, okay, with this technology. The best method to shield against this technology is mental shielding of the four. The, 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 the electronic jamming will work, but we can't do it. So mental shielding is the best way to do that. And I, I've talked about a few of these. Multitasking is a form of mental shielding. Uh, multitasking is where you, you think uh, in multiple threads. You're constantly thinking, doing, thinking and doing multiple things at one time, such as whistle while you work, uh, you know, dancing while listening to music, uh, et cetera, or, or, or watching television and cooking at the same time. Uh, this, this is called this is called multitasking, and it, what it does is it creates multiple threads of thought so that the, 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 the clone, the firewall, the, the, the hive mind team, they can't make sense of what they see on their screen. There's no, single, there's no single coherent pattern there. There's no single coherent thread of thought for them to integrate back into RNN data. It's called multitasking, and it's effective. It's very effective. So when you think, you know, you're doing something, and you think that, you know, they're, 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 they're reading your mind, and, of course, they are 24 hours a day. It's a supercomputer. Then you, if you start singing to yourself over and over while snapping your fingers, that's called multitasking. That's called you know, doing more than one thing at one time, thinking in multiple threads of thought. You're not actually thinking in multiple threads. You're actually toggling back and forth. But it creates, more, it creates multiple patterns on their screen, which they can't make any sense of. Okay? In order, in order for the – it's called integration completion. In order for the technology to work properly, in order for integration completion to be achieved, the RNA system – it has, to, it has to be able to minimize all external interference. And, and, and without your response to their specific impulse injections, their memory, et cetera, then there's no way. The, ver the verification process breaks apart. 
there is no coherent pattern for them to establish and integrate back into our new data. That's called multitasking, thinking and multiple threads of thought. So if you ever want to confuse them, just start whistling and just snapping your finger at the same time as you're, you know, as you're walking down the sidewalk or whistle while you work. Or li listening to music is very effective. Listening to music is the best, uh, the best shield that I have discovered of all the things that I've learned, listening to music. Because listening to me, pleasing music, now it can't be elevator music. It has, to be, it has to be a dominant external stimulus. And what happens is when you use another dominant, any, anything, that the brain has, has a tendency to align itself with any type of dominant external stimulus. And the brain aligning itself with, with, with a dominant external stimulus is called brain entrainment. That's what they're doing to you. They're, the supercomputer is, is constantly subliminally injecting with visual entrainment, et cetera, to entrain your brain constantly 24 hours a day. But when something else becomes the dominant external stimulus, such as watching a movie or listening to music, et cetera, then your brain is trained away from their system and their, their technology is disrupted. It, the, the, the mind control fails. So you want to break brain entrainment, first of all, and one of the ways to do that is by creating a dominant external stimulus and pleasing music is the most effective. It breaks brain entrainment. It also, listening to pleasing music also lights up the mind, I mean, just about every area of the mind, and it creates all this additional energy, this additional electromagnetic energy inside the neural pathways of the brain. So again, the, the mind control, the CIA, DIA, hide my team, he can't, the supercomputer, they can't make, it can't make sense of what it sees on the screen. It uses all this additional energy. Okay, it's effectively what's happening is pleasing, pleasing music is creating this additional electromagnetic energy inside the neural pathways of your brain, effectively jamming the information and injection feedback loop. Okay, uh, so, so, okay. so there's no way. To, I, I want to um, I want to second something that the caller said. I want to uh, agree with him that we should never send the message of no hope because as Christians we believe that all things are possible because we know God is in control. And when when we lose hope, then we stop. Well, like I, well, yeah, let like me I just said, finish I mean, my thought, please. Because when we lose hope, we stop fighting, and that's just where they want us in a very vulnerable position where we just go into survival mode. And we learn how to cope, but we don't fight. And I believe that we should fight this until the day we die. And so right, exactly. I know that I know that God is in control of all things. So I, I want to agree with the caller um, that there is hope. And I want everybody to know that there is hope. I don't care about these uh, supercomputers because they're not in control. God is in control. So right. I mean, and, and that's what the lady told me on the phone. She said, Brian, there's always hope with Jesus. And I, like I said, she was right. Um, uh, but, yeah, he's the only person that can help you. And if you don't know Jesus, I'm not here to, to bash you over the head with religion. I'm just saying you've got bigger trouble than mind control. If you don't know Jesus, he's Lord and Savior. But, but the guy was asking, uh, and I'm sorry, I dropped my, my, my earphone, so I wasn't able to, to, to hear what you said. I didn't mean to interrupt you. The guy was saying, you know, what else can be done? So you know that listening to music breaks brain entrainment, and that's a form of multitasking, you know, listening, doing multiple things at one time. Spontaneity, we were talking about that earlier um, Renata, you remember we were talking about spontaneity earlier, weren't we? Did we yes. talk about that? Okay. Uh, yes, but, I think we did. I want to say, too, when you mentioned listening to music, I sing a lot. I, uh, I listen to music through my earphones, and I sing a lot. And that really irritates the softers, number one. It really irritates them because I'm not paying attention to them. But um, it makes sense when you said if you make something else a more dominant factor, that it kind of disrupts. And I also want to throw in there meditation. Meditation has helped me tremendously, tremendously. Yeah, and whatever whatever helps is what you should do. I, I, I'm not saying that uh, that uh, uh, there's no hope. I'm saying that under the present scenario, the government's not going to help you. And basically, the only help you can rely on is God. Um, but spontaneity is another effective method to defeat their technology, to disrupt their technology. Remember, it's all about the establish, the, the establishing patterns. Uh, uh, patterns of your choice preference patterns, patterns of, of previous thought during thought composition before you prepare to act. Well, they have to predict your choices. And if they can, if the supercomputer can't predict your choices at speed of light, if it can't do that, then there's no way for them to verify their technology. So every day, although you don't know it, every day this computer is predicting your choices. Okay? It's doing it. All, it's all automated. Okay? So if you're spontaneous, Say, for example, you decide to go to the grocery store. Where the, the supercomputer reads your mind, says he's headed to the store. Okay, so they're going to have people behind you. They're going to have people in front of you. 
They're going to have people waiting at the store entrance, and they're going to have people in the aisle where the peanut butter is, which is why you're going to get to, to, to the store to get peanut butter, all to verify that their technology is working properly. But if you're spontaneous, if you use spontaneity constantly every day of your life, okay, then you break the pattern because you just the, the prediction is broken. The pattern is broken. It doesn't matter that they know you're being spontaneous. They sit there, well, what they believe or their opinion is not what they're there for. They're there for the data. They're there for the hard research data. Okay, they're there to develop patterns. And when you do something okay, that I'm gonna, that I'm pattern, gonna, um Excuse me, Brian. I'm going to tell uh, Kimber, thank you. I'm going to put you on hold and, and take the next person. Thank you, Kimber. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Brian, what is the difference between why is it that they choose to give some people the voices and some people the stalking? Why don't we all get everything? Brian? Oh, did I lose him? Brian, are you there? Did he get put on hold? Star eight if you're on hold, Brian. Uh oh, I think I lost him, you guys. Let me try to give him a call. I think we lost our guest. Okay, he's going to call back in. We got disconnected. Just give a moment here. I hope you guys are getting something out of this. Um, I think it's very informative. Just waiting for him to call back in. And then we'll, uh, we'll take a call from Vermont. And and then Arizona. He's having a hard time. Okay, he's he's here. Uh, start eight, Brian, so I can see you. There you are. Hello. Hi, I had two quick questions for Brian. Is he still there? Oh, what? No, he's not. I'm trying to find him. Okay, let me put oh. you back on hold. I thought you were Thank down. you. Thank uh-huh. you. Start eight. Start eight. Start eight again, so you'll light back up. Okay. Okay. I'm looking for Brian. Hello. I'm not Brian. Brian. Oh, no, okay. I'm not Brian. Okay, uh, Lala, I'm gonna put you back on hold. Start eight again, so you'll light back up. Okay. All right. Sorry, you guys. He's in California. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to try calling them again. Okay, hi. Hi.
Okay, someone told me he's at the bottom of the board. Let me look again. Thank you for the person in the chat room who gave me that information. Let me look. Oh, okay. Brian? Hi. Okay. Sorry, I yeah, had a uh, hard time so finding I, you. The call, call hung up. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. No problem. Uh, uh, and thank you, Writing the Wind, for letting me know that Brian uh, was on the call at the bottom. So, Brian, we left off. I was asking a question. What? How do they base the decision on how to target a person? I do know that it goes off your reactions and all of their observations of you. But I'm wondering why some people get the voices and some people get the stuff. Why? why? Again, it's, it's all, it all depends on the program that they placed you in. Okay, remember there were hundreds of programs at MK Ultra, and that was decades ago. So it depends upon the program, uh, and what they use they use they uh, use what are called chatter boxes. Um, these are thought, uh, one of them is called TAMI, Thought and Memory Interface. Uh, chatter boxes are basically automated special language software, and this automated special language software is designed to engage you in dialogue, not just I mean your thoughts. Remember, the system is designed to to capture whatever you're thinking about at speed of light, and then to fabricate stories based on whatever you're thinking. So you actually believe, can you hear me? I can, yes, go right ahead. So you actually, so you actually believe that you know, this train of thought, the narrative of thought is yours, when in fact it's them constantly injecting, manipulating your train of thought, narrative of thought. Um, so again, it depends on the program that you're in. Uh, some people are, 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 are targeted for religious purposes, but they target the belief system. Others are targeted for various reasons. They always do what is most difficult. So once you're targeted, they initially target you with this technology. They build a profile. And based on that profile, whatever it is that is most difficult with you is what they do. They're going to turn you into an atheist or they'll try to at least subdue your faith. Maybe they can't, you know. This is important for their research. It is important to learn how to manipulate Okay, so some people, it, their their um, brain entrainment or their mind control is more effective on the target if they do the voices on them, whereas some is more effective, more effective if they soften. Is that correct? Right. Okay. All right, I'm going to unmute someone. We have several people that want to ask you a question. Start eight if you have a question. Hello? Hello? Yes, I say your name, please, everyone else in yours. Go Are you right talking ahead. to me? Yes, Lala, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Uh, hey, this is Lala. Um, I have a question. Okay, I've been wearing a rare earth magnet for 24, 24 months, and a lot of my stuff has decreased, but I keep seeing these. Well, there used to be a lot of orbs on the television. Now it's not that many orbs, but I see, like, beams, but the beams have gotten a lot smaller. Like, I used to have the V2K and everything, but I don't have the V2K. Only thing that I get now is a little bit of the sleep deprivation. So could you tell me what that is that's on the television? Okay, you said you're seeing light? Okay, first they were orbs. They were orbs coming from when I first started wearing the magnet. And um, I, I started to see, I seen like a rainbow in the light. Like you can only see it when the television is off. But on the actual TV, you see like when it would show like cheaters, like like certain TV shows, like cheaters or cops. You, wherever you can see, wherever the sun is, you can see like these orbs. And then um, sometimes it would turn into beams, like right from the sun. I was just wondering if you know anything about that. But they yeah. have gotten oh. smaller. They used to be bigger, but now they have gotten smaller because I'm still wearing the magnet. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. The, 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 okay. The, in your eyes is what, what is called the optic nerve. The each eye has an optic optic nerve. And Thank you, Lord. The, 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 the directed energy. Well, this is actually one of the universal byproducts of all people who are targeted with this technology. It's tinnitus and what are called phosphines. What I'm going to describe to you now is called phosphines, okay? What phosphines are, are, are light, streaks of light, flashes of light, etc., caused by the optical nerve being stimulated by the stream of electromagnetic low frequency waves that are targeting your brain with to manipulate okay, your Okay, but, but other people can see it, though. 
I'm not the only one that can see it. Other people can see it too. Okay. I remember a lot a large part of what they do, okay, is based on deception and manipulation. Okay. Now, uh they, they deceive you and manipulate you. What they do is a game of deception and manipulation, nothing more. Never forget that. That's what all mind control is about, deception and manipulation. And again, it's designed to designed to confuse the target, to distract the target to place the target into a position of functional disorientation where the speed of light impulse injection, the memory attack, et cetera, that where the brain is more uh, willing to accept the artificial impulse injection by placing you in, into a position of a functional disorientation. So, so they may, they may uh, use drowsiness, they may use dizziness, they may use uh, various uh, uh, physical things happening, sounds. Uh, all of this can be, can be induced directly into the mind. Uh, if other people can see, if other people can see these, these orbs of light, it, it could it could be just designed to distract to distract you. I'm not saying it's not them, but again, it's you know fear and paranoia, et cetera. These, these their tactics are designed to constantly keep the, the target individual in in a position in a state of fear and paranoia. It's designed to do that. Okay, why? Because they're trying to map out your brain. They're trying to build a cognitive model of your of your mind. And so but I'm not, I'm not con- scared or anything. But the I'm various not, reasons why, why they do these. But the, the, the thing is, what you need to understand is, some people have other things happening to them. They have, and I'm not saying that this is a complete answer for your problem. I don't know. I'm not there. I didn't see it. But I can tell you that they engage in these activities, okay, in order to provoke you into various responses which can be remotely measured. So they, they, need, they need to provoke you across the entire spectrum of emotion, from love and hate, to, to, to lust uh, and uh, uh, fear and paranoia and despair and uh, other things, okay? So they're constantly keeping you in a state of fear and paranoia or provoking you into some other type of, of emotional reaction, and they use these stimuli, these uh, uh, colors or objects or symbols or sounds, et cetera, lights, to provoke you constantly to, because they're mapping out each synaptic response of your brain. Now, I, there, you know, there are so many programs I don't know anything about. You might, I might refer that question to Dr. Robert Duncan, but I do know that they're constantly trying to distract the victim with, uh, you know, lights and, and uh, colors and objects and symbols and so on, to, because they want to, they want to, dis, to, to distract you and confuse you, so that you're more willing to accept the, the remote neural, uh, neural programming. And I don't know if this is true in your case. I can't say for sure why they're doing it. A lot of times these uh, orbs that they've used in the past, I, I heard one lady talking about it, that they were, they were following her, that these lights were actually Yeah, I following had them do her. that too. I had them do that um, at first, yeah. And, and, and I do know they have a technology where they use plasma orbs for, for tracking devices. But I, I, I mean, I, I cannot, the best I can tell you is that it's probably happening to you because they're trying to provoke you into responses, okay? But they're not getting and, and any they, response. You, they're not well, getting anything out of me. Only thing that they're doing to me now is just a little. I get a little bit of the sleep deprivation. All the holograms and the V2K. I don't have any of that anymore. I just. I'm, I'm still wearing a magnet. I'm still wearing a magnet, and I'm gonna. Who told you to wear a magnet? I prayed and Jesus. Told, I know this sounds funny, but I prayed and Jesus told me to wear it. Okay. Oh my. Oh my gosh. Okay. Listen to me. Listen to me. Okay. Uh, Dwight Mangum gets on these calls. And tells people to take tape aluminum forehead to their to their to their t- tape aluminum fold to their forehead, okay, and wear magnets in their socks, okay. All that that's not helping you one bit. All it does is discredit you, even by even listening to such nonsense, okay. That you know, what, by by having a magnet next to you is not going to help you. The, even if you were able to build a, a, a magnetic shield, it would still have to first be chaotic. In order for ha- holding a magnet, sleeping with a magnet in your sock or next to your head at night is not going to help you to stop anything. Don't listen to Dwight, man, and the other people that No, tell you I'm this. not listening to Dwight. I, I, I'm not. I, I don't even know Dwight. I'm telling you, I've been, I I was really getting tortured, and my stuff is really leaving. Like, for well, real. I, I would tell you, Brian, because I know Lala, uh, Lala used to get multiple voices at one time in her head. Seven. And, and seven different people in her head for voices. And uh, she started wearing the uh, rare earth magnet, and she's been doing it for almost two years, and she no longer skips the voices. So she has seen results um, from the Well, the results, 
the results have nothing to do with, with rare earth magnets, I promise you. Now, I, it may be that they want to, you to correlate those results with the fact that you wear rare earth magnets. They do that, okay? Again, it's designed to distract you and confuse you and discredit you, uh, et cetera, okay? But, but, but you're, not, you're, not, you're, you're, not, you're not no longer getting V2K because you've got a rare earth magnet around your neck. It's just not happening, I promise you, okay? It's not mm-hmm. happening. Uh, so, so the magnet uh, is, not, is not responsible for doing anything. Uh, now, if you were to able to build a magnetic shield and you were able to, uh, to create a magnetic shield that was chaotic, uh, but, again, it comes closed but chaotic, and, I don't, you know, I'd have to refer you to Dr. Robert Duncan for that. I just don't know that there's any way to do that. It would help. Um, but for example, okay, let me, okay. Let me just thanks, say. Lala. We're going to take the next. There's other people waiting. Thank you, Lala. Uh, All right. Okay, yeah, so I want to ask you a question, Brian. So are you saying okay. that, that this high mind thing in Lala's case, in Lala's case where she definitely sees a difference since she's been wearing the magnet, so are you saying that they decided to stop the voices for her, or? Well, I mean, everything, for them, it's all about the technology. They don't care about uh, a magnets or anything else. They care about their technology. So everything's designed to confuse and distract the targeted individual. For example, uh, every time uh, they'll, they introduce a stimulus, they'll also introduce some type of situational scenario to back up that stimulus so that the targeted individual, the mind control victim, believes that this is happening. For example, uh, they'll be attacked every time the neighbor comes home. And so the, 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 the targeted individual, the mind control victim, will begin to correlate the pain and the, and the symptoms that they're suffering with the fact that their neighbor just drove up in the driveway and it happens every day, and therefore my neighbor's attacking me. This is just an example. Okay, it's called indirection. Okay, it's an example of what, what, can, what, can, they do, how, what can they do to distract and confuse the mind control victim. It's all about research for them, training, research, and development. Okay, so it's not just magnets. Okay, it's anything. That because uh, they want to see what you can maintain is truth. But I'm just so, trying to uh, figure out in her case, so would that mean that they turned the frequencies down on her because she she absolutely does not get the voices anymore? So did they right, turn right, down the right, frequencies down right. or what? Exactly, exactly. For whatever reason, they chose to, to target her in a different method. Um, but, again, I mean, whether it's magnets or peanut butter, they don't care. What they care about is their technology. It's designed to see how they can distract and become confused and manipulate the belief system of, of, of the mind control victim. What, what, what can they maintain is true. What, what, uh, you know, if, if you think sticking your head in the sand is going to protect you, uh, they'll, they'll, they'll have you sticking your head in the sand. If you think wrapping your head in aluminum foil will protect you, then they will, call, they will, will structure their attacks in a way that, the, that, the, that the, the, you don't suffer pain when you've got your head wrapped in aluminum foil. Lola Falls not doing anything. It's just that they're using it to manipulate your belief system. Okay? So they'll, they will, they will the, the, the technology is designed to destroy the credibility of, of, of another person by, by having them engage in, in activities which seem to the, to the casual observer to be just absolutely ludicrous. Or the person who's casually listening to the conversation, it just seems like at the end of the day, the, the person is discredited because they were manipulated into believing this thing. So this is, okay. just, this is just one. Right, okay. All right, so we're I, I want to tell another... this lady right now, I want to tell this lady right now that V2K is not stopping because she's got a rare earth magnet around her neck. It's not happening. I promise you that. I promise you. I'm glad that, that you're not having the attacks anymore. It's not because you're wearing a rare earth magnet around your neck. Um, but, uh, you know, they're, they're, uh, what was I thinking? Uh, superconductor materials, should block the signal. We are talking about, about shielding earlier. Superconductor right. materials would, would block the, the, the signal. Oh, I'm walking in front of us. Right. I'm, at a, I'm at a train station. Uh, okay. and, and so that might help, uh, but, you know, not a magnet. Okay, not a magnet. Okay, so. Okay. Just want to say so that. we're going to um, take another uh, question. Deception and manipulation. Deception and manipulation. That's what this technology is designed for. Or to, uh, oh, Vermont, uh, say your name, please. You unmuted me again, but I've already asked my question. Okay. Do you have another question or no? No, I didn't, um, star eight. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm. All righty. Uh, let's see here. Star eight, if you have a question or a comment. Hello? 
Hello, Virginia. Hi, this is Wanda. Um, Wanda. Jim, I am another person who is very much helped by magnets. Um, I wear a knee brace with magnets on it when I take it off. The chip in my knee starts acting up when I have it on. I'm covered. It works just fine. I also, and actually I don't feel any, I'm not hit in my knee. And also um, it, it, there's no pain, there's no sensation in anything when I have the magnets on my knee. In addition, I also have one for my head because I have a chip in my head. And when I wake up with, without sleeping near that magnet, you wake up with a headache and a stiff neck. If I sleep with it, I don't have that headache. Now, let me just follow and say that if this, the computer is trying to make me believe that the magnets uh, work, then in fact, it's really the computer that's making things work, it's to say that then I believe that I'm not targeted and there's nothing going on in my body and there's nothing they can do to me. Then does the computer make the adjustment to leave me alone? Um, right, right. It's a computer. I, now, I, listen. I cannot, can, what can I believe? What can I decide to purchase or activate in my life as a protection? And then the computer is going to say, okay, that, we want her to believe that this works. So that means I could just think myself out of being targeted. No. <laughs> No, it don't work that way. But, uh, okay. You don't get yeah. You don't get to think positive thoughts to create you know, a shield around you. That's not going to happen. Okay, let, let's let's talk about this. Okay, all right. Remember, you're being attacked by by two things: supercomputer and the uh, the hive mind team. And when the hive mind team wants to attack you, okay, with these remote neural attacks, they have to interface with the supercomputer. So everything everything starts with the computer. It's the, the attack which is the computer. A computer multiplexer routes the signal and it comes to you. Okay, so so basically what you're saying is um, how can you disrupt that signal? Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is I'm following, I'm following your line of thinking in that if I use magnets, and the only reason why the magnets are helping is not the magnets, but it's the computer making the adjustment because I think the magnets are helping me, then I can employ other things in my life to continue to reduce any kind of targeting that they're doing to me. That because your line of your your response to Lala was that I I guarantee you it's not the magnet, it's the computer making you believe that it's the magnet. So then my line to go that even further then, okay, so then I can do something. I can use magnets, and I can add to the magnets and just continue to reduce reduce my suffering or my targeting following that line of thinking that I'm going to make a computer try to make me believe that these things are working, and then as a result of that, I'm feeling better. Well, whether you're feeling better or not I, I, is, not, is not what I'm trying to say. I'm trying, well, the point I'm trying to make is uh, that, you know, you, subjectively you can't, the system is designed to manipulate your memory and thought process, and they'll use whatever it takes, whatever you respond to. Whether you believe that you're, you know, that the, the, the magnet is shielding you, that doesn't matter to them. All that matters is that your memory and thought process is effectively manipulated by this technology. Okay, so so whether whether it's magnets or whether it's some other passive material, uh, you know, it, it, it's not the passive material is not block is not defeating the technology. And they don't want you to believe that. Okay. Because, again, it's all about perception and manipulation. But that's not what's happening. So whether it's happening to you this way or that way, that doesn't change the fact that magnets cannot stop this technology. It's, okay? Magnets cannot shield you from this technology. It is not possible. Now, I'm glad you're feeling better, um, but it's not because you're wearing magnets. Okay. Um, I think, okay. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you. I have to say, um, Brian, that I think a lot of people would disagree with you with the magnets because there are a lot of people who see uh, health benefits from, from magnets. Magnets have a I'm lot not saying they don't have. I'm not saying they don't have benefits. I'm not saying that. I'm saying as far as, as far as this technology, I'm not saying that you know there aren't no, there are no therapeutic benefits from wearing magnets. I don't know if there are. There aren't. I'm not a medical doctor. 
Okay. I'm just saying as far as this technology is concerned, this technology is not blocked by wearing magnets. It's just not happening. I promise you it's not happening. If you were able to create a magnetic shield that was chaotic in nature and was and was uh, you know made of superconducting materials that were that was grounded and it had a cooling system and all that other fancy stuff that goes along with such contraption, you know, you might get some benefit from that. But you're not getting you're not gonna be you're not gonna protect your, your, your mind from this technology where you're magnet. It's just not happening. I'm not saying magnets don't have therapeutic benefits. I'm saying this technology is not defeated by wearing magnets. I promise you it's not. Okay. So, uh, Louisiana, I just unmuted you. Do you have a question or a comment? Say your name, please. Hi, my name is Jade Wilson. Thank you guys so much for having this conversation tonight. Thank you. You have a um, question? My, my question is, um, there's so many different programs. Um, how do you distinguish which program you're from, or is there any, or, you're, or that you're in, or is there any way to distinguish it? I am. Um, I am one that gets uh, attacked by the stalking, and they all wear red, you know, red everything, in, including cars right. and things like that. And then the one headlight on and the one light off, and then just what Brian said earlier, you know, as soon as you, when you leave your house at night, you get the bright lights behind you, in front of you, the whole the whole deal, you know. I'm not, and, and I'm not, and I'm not, I'm not the type of person to scare easily, so I'm not going to allow them to intimidate me to the point of anything crazy. So I think I have a strong mind, thank God for that. And I do believe that, you know, anything that um, is possible is possible in Jesus as well. How do you know? Well, I, I get, my question is, how do you distinguish what program they put you in? Is there a way to distinguish that? Not that I know of. The only reason I know about those two programs is because I was in them and I did the research and was able to determine those were the two that I was placed into. Um, but it sounds to me like you're trauma-based. You know, it sounds to me, uh, generally, if they don't want you to know you're targeted, you won't know it. Again, I said earlier that this technology can be achieved with mind control technology, remote neural monitoring, remote neural manipulation. It can all be achieved at lower intensity. So it's not necessary to torture unless, you know, the person is trauma-based and, and, then, and then torture, long-term satanic ritual abuse, et cetera, is necessary. Um, the, you know, the, the creation of, of, of physical and psychological pain and trauma is necessary in order to eventually force the mind control victim to disassociate from reality. But what, what you're saying is, sounds to me like you're trauma-based. Well, as to what program you're in, I can't tell you. But I can say that from what you said, it sounds to me like they're trying to sensitize you to certain stimuli. When no, I say they, have, they have definitely sensitized me to red. I'm trying to unsensitize yeah. myself, which I'm doing very well at. But I do, I do feel and know that it is definitely a demonic force. Um, you know, right. I can almost see, I can almost see the evil in, in certain people's eyes. It's just the craziest thing. And and, I, and sometimes some of these people, I don't even know if they realize what they're doing. You know, um, they're remotely maybe being told to go wear red and walk outside. I mean, I even feel like my neighbors do the same thing. You know. Uh, so well, let me, um, if, I, if I can interject for one quick second, um, Jay brought up a good point where she said she's working on desensitizing herself. Are there any desensitizing techniques that you um, can share with us, Brian, for the people who get the, uh, the stalking? Is there yes, any way we can um, desensitize ourselves? To it? Yes, yeah, our deep pattern. Yeah. Um, one, one of the things that you can do to deep pattern their technology is to listen to pleasing music or to engage in, in recreational activities, um, things that become the dominant external stimulus and uh, break brain entrainment with their system. Um, because in order for you to do to, to, to de pattern their 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 uh, neuro programming, you have to know you have to have some idea of what it is they're doing to you. A lot of the times the neuro programming is subliminal in nature. Uh, you'll have dream modulation, et cetera. But once you see a pattern of like for example they're targeting my my faith and belief system and uh, constant engaging, I was able to determine this by, by looking for uh, patterns of their activity, uh, having people constantly talking about God and religion and Jesus and the church. Uh, and I was able to draw patterns in this, and I was able to determine that that's what's happening. Um, so, so first of all, you need to identify you know, exactly how you're being attacked. You know, what, are, what is the pattern that, that's developing with regard to you know, uh, your, your, uh, um, your, your lifestyle, your uh, any you know any destructive habits you may have, 
um, you know, your social, your, your social, economic background. What is it? What is it that, we that has been disrupted by this technology? What area of your life has been disrupted the most? And do you see a pattern there? Once you begin to notice a pattern, then you can tell how they're attacking you. Uh, and then you need, to, in order to de-pattern um, the, the, the neuroprogramming. One of the things that I do that's been helpful for me is to, is to listen to Christian music. Um, mm -hmm. Because they're, I mean, their, their neuroprogramming involves satanic ritual abuse. Uh, and it may not always be Satan, but it will be satanically horrific, okay? Um, and a lot of that is, is the subliminal level. And so because Christianity de-patterns satanic ritual abuse, it's been very helpful for me. Um, but uh, what, another thing you can do is, is first, you, of course, you need to break brain entrainment with their system. And, and the way you do that is by, by creating a dominant external stimulus. So find, you know, something that, that, that is, it becomes a dominant external stimulus for you, whether it's singing and dancing, writing, whether it's uh, uh, working out at the gym, uh, listening to pleasing music, et cetera. These external activities create, uh, help to break brain entrainment, if only temporarily. And, and uh, for me, listening to pleasing music is the most effective. It's simply the most effective because it not only breaks brain entrainment with the system, but it also uh, alters your brainwave signature. It alters your brainwave pattern, and yeah, that makes it very totally difficult. Brain. It jostles. Dr. Robert Duncan said it. it jo I can't remember what he said. It. Anyway, the, the system is designed to monitor your emotional state, and um, you know anything that helps to to alter their ability to to manipulate your emotional state is is, mm -hmm. is helpful. And I, you know, but I can't tell you exactly what it is you should do because I don't know how you're being targeted. Well, and the weird thing about this, too, and, and, and I totally agree with everything that you just said because I've been using a lot of the same things that you just recommended. Um, but, you know, when 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 I first started noticing this, you know, I think back and I realized that this has happened to me a long time in different ways, but now they've used the color, you know, to bring my right. attention to it. But well, you, can I ask you a question? Were, were you, did, was red your favorite color at one time? Were you ever Did you ever like red or anything? I mean, you know, the weird thing is uh, I bought a, a red car, a new red car, uh, in August, and ever since I bought the car, um, which is not mm. the normal color okay. I would normally buy, it's just for something that they did just to kind of, you know, make me see it. But it's so strange. It's almost as if they have a movie stu studio close by where they have all these recreational vehicles and people and actors right. just, just ready to just say, okay, you know, go down this street, go down that street. It seems like they have walkie-talkies to do this kind of thing. She's getting ready to leave or you know, she started her car or whatever. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about the Christian thing. Um, you know, I was I'm definitely a bad place Christian, and I, I'm a Christian woman. I don't I'm naturally am a sinner. I'm not perfect. But um, from a Christian standpoint, um, I was approached by someone that I did not realize was a psychic, um, and I guess this was something on purpose that targeted me too as well. And this happened Can I go up? years ago. Can I go up? I didn't, I and I didn't realize. I when I it up. Okay. I didn't realize um, this woman was a psychic. She claimed to be a prophet of God, <laughs> and she started telling me, you know, about people in my family that were deceased. And then, and that right then, I realized I asked her to stop. And before I knew it, she had already said enough. And I kind of feel like I was cursed in a way from that, and you know it's led to it's led to more things. So this is definitely a demonic, satanic attack upon on all of us. Um, it's the main core of this, and it is it is designed to drive you crazy or make you look insane to everyone else. Which you know, so I actually see myself very intelligent, and I wonder if that's some, one of the reasons why you know, that I was chosen is because of my, I believe I have high intelligence, not just mentally, but street smart. <laughs> so it, I want well, to you to crack. Well, okay. Um, again, you were chosen because you fell into one of those four categories. That's why you were chosen. I'm uh, chosen because judicial, why? I'm sorry. Judicial, judicial target, extra judicial target, target of opportunity, or lucrative target. That's why you were chosen. You, you fell into one of those four categories. And you sounds like to me, it sounds like to me what they're doing is they're running you through some type of verification routine, constantly running yeah. you through a verification. That's it could be, you know, I'm an activist for the for the right things that, you know, in the community and stuff. You know, um, I'm conservative, though. Um, but, you know, I did go against sort of a big machine 
politically, and, you know, that's possibly why, you know. But I really, I don't know that that's all of it, because I, I do remember back when I was little having weird things happen to me. So, you know, I'm just guessing. You know, that we're all just guessing, I guess. Nobody really knows. That's the, that's the big question, why. But, um, but I'm glad that you said that, because I just started doing that more. And listening to music does definitely help. And, and actually getting into the Word. Or and not only, Holy not only breaks brain and training. It not only breaks brain entrainment with their system, okay, by becoming the dominant external stimulus, okay, but the pleasing music alters your brainwave pattern. And because it alters your brainwave pattern, they can't make sense of what they see on the screen. So they have no choice but to either revert back to your past activity or admit the speed of their of their technology. There's no other way around it. Uh, so yeah, listening to pleasing music is very effective. But what they're what they're doing is what they're doing to all target individuals is they're constantly running into verification routines. The process is endless. It's, it's, it's the hyper game theory. It's just endless. And it's you know and, and and it can be initiated by them at, at will. Okay? So so once they you know they verify that, that this color works on you or that color works on you, then it then that then that color or that symbol or that object, et cetera, is used in the next wave of harassment routine. It's just constant, it's continuous. So Brian, let me you ask you a question. How do you send a message to them that this color doesn't work on me? And by the way, you asked her about if red was her favorite color. Red and black seem to be their favorite. Uh, but they yeah, will use does. other colors on people. So I, uh, my question to you, Brian, is how do you send the message that this is not working on me? Do you just ignore it or are you not react? Right, to the... right. Okay. right. Well, again, it's not enough that you respond, but you must respond to their specific stimuli in order for the verification process to work properly. Okay, so it doesn't matter that you respond to, to red, if someone's walking down the street wearing red, you need to respond to one of their situational scenarios, conversational scenarios, that contains the color red, in order for them to determine and be able to measure and gauge that their neuro programming is effective. Okay, so it sounds to me like what's happening with her is they're running her through some type of verification routine. You know, and, and, and verification is a big part of, of the technology. Everybody has to go through it. But it seems to me like the, the more the more the more you're able to defeat the system, recognize the tactics are happening, and one of the ways uh, the more the more they're going, they're going to run you through the same routine over and over. But the, one of the ways you do that is by ignoring uh, their uh, um, their their provocation. You, you know, remember the provocations are there to provoke you into emotional reactions, reactions which they can remotely measure. Well, they can't remotely measure if there's no emotional reaction. So the first thing you do is you ignore them. Even if you do have an emotional reaction, you don't show it. Because they need you to, 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 they need to pitch you into some type of action or access sequence to determine the neural pro pro programming is working effectively. If you don't do something or say something, if you don't respond in some way, there's no way for them to determine whether it's successful or whether they've got to start over again, increase the frequency, et cetera. Okay? So one of the ways that you defeat their technology is by totally ignoring them. Um, because... Because it all starts with their ability to capture your attention. If the, if the organized stalkers cannot capture your attention, then, it, then their technology fails. There's no way for the stimuli, there's no way for them to gauge whether the neural programming is working properly or not if they cannot capture it. Again, uh, they're looking for electromagnetic emissions of the brain. The, the supercomputer is downloading all electromagnetic activity of your brain. So every time you respond with love, hate, fear, paranoia, remorse, despair, etc., all of those are being downloaded at speed of light back into supercomputers to be used against you in the next wave of harassment routine once they've been able to determine a coherent, single coherent pattern of thought. So you think this way when this happens, and you think that way when that happens. Okay, well, what, what's the frequency for that? What's the electromagnetic, or alpha, beta, delta, theta? What's the brainwave pattern for that, for that emotional response from her or him? Okay? In this case, it's with regard to her and red. Okay, so once they determine what the emotional, once they determine the, the proper frequency for that emotional reaction, they no longer have to use the color red. They can just target you with that frequency and replicate the same symptom of fear and paranoia, et cetera. Are these people that wear or wear red, do they get paid? I mean, or are they yes. just electronically told to do this? That's what that's what makes it so evil. I mean, they're not okay, doing it for Okay, thank you, Jade. Finances. I'm going to put you on hold, Brian. Go ahead and ask her a question, Jade. Thank Thanks you so much. Okay, thank you. 
ahead, that's man. what makes it that's what makes it so evil. Uh, they're not doing it for the country, you know. They're not, you know, uh, they're doing it for the money. These private contractors and the companies that they work for are doing it for for a government pension. They're torturing and killing people. You know, they're getting paid and getting paid big time. Um, now the gang stalkers and others below them, I don't know uh, if they, if they receive money or, or or perks or something else. There must be some type of uh, I don't know. They, they, they are compensated they as well. They are compensated. Yeah, some cash under the table. Remember, this is this is all about three things. It's all about censorship, memory management, and direct behavioral control. So they need to figure out how to censor you, how to manage your memory, the narrative and train of your thought and memory process, and how to achieve direct behavioral control over you. And the way that they do that, one of the ways that they do that, okay, is is, is, is by engaging in these in these. Uh, and organized talking, these situational and conversational scenarios based on the best topics that they know you're going to pay attention to. Okay, they're not going to walk up next to you. They're not, for example, with me. They they're not going to walk up next to me and sit down and start having a conversation about, you know, the New York Yankees. I care nothing about the New York Yankees. That's not going to capture my attention. They're going to walk up and sit down next to me and start talking about the Atlanta Braves. They're, because they know that 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 topic is going to capture my attention, and when it does it's going to create an electromagnetic emission in my brain, which the system can measure. Again, this is they're measuring all synaptic responses okay, of your brain, whole brain emulation, mapping out your brain. Okay, so, so all the trauma, physical and psychological trauma that they're, they're uh, putting, wearing the color red or organized stalking or vandaliz vandalizing your property, stealing your things, whatever, okay, it's all designed to constantly keep you in a series of constant counter moves, constantly provoking you into an endless series of counter moves every day. Because each time you try to counter what they do, that creates an evoked potential. And that evoked potential in your brain is remotely measured by the supercomputer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I just uh, muted um, Hart. Did you have a question, another question or comment? I have a, I have a question. I, I want to give him just a brief scenario of this and then I have a question. Brian, did you come out of the defense industry? I was in the, I was the Department of Defense. I was a low-level security contractor for the Department of Defense. That was it. Okay. I, think, I came out of the, the defense industry, the largest uh, defense contractor in the world, Lockheed Martin. My husband was also an aeronautical engineer. Here's, here's what happened, and then I'm going to ask you the question. They targeted my husband first. They murdered him. They knew we had a million dollars in insurance. They took all the money, vandalized all of the assets that the money they didn't take bought, and basically rendered me in a constant state of of uh, anxiety. Uh, I was never fearful. I was just always mad, angry, and upset. And then. They put the deception in there, playing on my psychology, knowing that I would automatically think the prosecutor was racist because my husband was a black man, and that's why they didn't act on uh, pursuing the person who killed him and, and, and giving justice. So in other words, it was all these false flags shown up, and I knew nothing until uh, just about a year ago I found out about the program and I was targeted. Okay, this is, so what they use now is this constant desire, strong desire, because I had such a strong marriage and a, a good life, this strong <coughs> desire to have a husband. <coughs> so they've used two people to create these traumatic situations. Okay, you, you talked, you, you, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, but I'm saying is, what, what is your question because... Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to follow you, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where you're going. I, so have you asked me a question already, or are you going to ask me a question? I'm going to ask you another question. Okay, what, what is it? I, 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 let me write I, this down, because you're talking so fast I can't figure out what you're saying. Okay. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. What I want to ask okay. you is have you seen a pattern of people who say so much in the defense industry that they play a part in it? Yes, okay, all right. All right, everybody's situation is different. So, you know, everybody's pain threshold is different. Everybody's, 
life is different. People are so uh, different in their in their socioeconomic the way they live, they conduct their lives. Um, uh, that 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 everyone's situation is different. The the the, the, the program that they're placed into is tailor made for them. That you know, so they would engage in events. Uh, that would in incidents that would create trauma for you might not create trauma for someone else. Okay, so so the fact that they they you know, they, they, they hurt your family and the fact that they targeted your finances, uh, these are all common common steps uh, that that they do with the mind control victim to slowly break them down. Remember that the ultimate goal of mind control is to reconfigure your memory and thought process, to rewire the way you think. Okay. And in order to do that, using trauma, they have to constantly create never-ending uh, uh, scenarios where the person is in a constant state of fear and paranoia, and using uh, electromagnetic energy to, to amplify that state because they're more uh, uh, likely to to, uh, to to respond to the to the stimuli that they're using in order to effectively measure the neuro programming. So, uh, you know, what might be traumatic for you might not be traumatic for me, and what might be traumatic for me might not be traumatic for you. The point is this. You're using trauma to map out your sensory and neural pathways. When I say sensory neural pa- sensory pathways, I mean the sensory pathways of your central nervous system. So headaches, and nausea, and, and burning, and itching of the skin, uh, et cetera. Those are the sensory pathways of your central nervous system. That's what they're mapping out. The psychological trauma uh, is, is, is done to target the will, intellect, and emotion. So they're targeting your will, intellect, and emotion. First, to, to map out your brain into a cognitive model so they can achieve direct behavioral control over you by, uh, in this case, uh, by, 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 by rewiring the way you think, to reconfigure your, your, the way you think, your memory and thought process. So um, the concept, the targeting of your family and the destruction of your finances and the de- destroying your life, notice it's done in increments. It's done a little at a time, not all at once, okay? Again, that's, the, that's how trauma-based mind control works, okay? They, they, have, they must, in order for whole brain emulation to occur, in order for whole brain emulation to occur, uh, this takes many years. It takes a long time um, and, and, and decades. Some people take decades. Uh, so... Um, that's what's happening. They're, they're using trauma to reconfigure your memory and thought process. That's why they're targeting your finances and their destruction, so that you have no resources to fight back, to flee, to, to make their job more difficult. Do you understand? And Brian, I mean, let, me ask you, let me ask you something else comes to mind as, you, as uh, you and Hart are speaking about this. What about these framings that they do when they set people up intentionally? I know, I know that it is about getting uh, the target into one of their systems, either the psychiatric system or a penal system, and in jail. Um, but what can you do? You have any information on that? On this this whole framing thing that they do? Well, yeah. Um, uh, okay. Uh, in order for them to be able to control the mind control victim, in order for them to be able to isolate the mind control victim, uh, in order for them to, in order, in order for them to determine whether or not their neuroprogramming can, can cause the, vic- in order, in order, in order for them to understand, the only way for them to, to know that, that the person will commit a crime or do some evil act or respond in some violent way is to actually have them commit the crime or do some evil act or respond in some violent way. That's the only way they can determine whether or not their technology is effective. The only way for them to determine whether a person will kill based on mind control technology is to have the person actually kill someone or steal or commit adultery or whatever, is to have them actually engage in the act itself. And one of the things that they do in order to, 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 uh, to isolate the victim, uh, in order to destroy the victim, is they set the victim up especially once they're finished with the program or whatever objective they're trying to achieve, they basically have four scenarios that they're going to employ. Because they cannot just allow the trauma-based mind control victim to walk away. Okay, you, you can put them a loose cannon. You can come back in the future to testify against them, et cetera. So you, usually one of four things is going to happen to you. And one of those things is they're going to set you up and frame you and have you thrown in prison or a mental institution. Or they're going to kill you or they're going to target your brain and fry your brain. It's called mind hobbling. Um, those are the, the if, if it's you know if killing the victim 
is not necessary, then the preferable way of going about it is to have the victim set up and framed. Once you're in the system, it is much easier for them to control you and to isolate you. Because, because you know, and and to run their smear campaign. Because this is training. This is about training. Because this is about training, research, and development, and they need a controlled environment. Um, Because if you've got the money to run around the world, you know, from country to country, or you've got the money to hire a lawyer, all you're doing is making their job more difficult. Understand, they want you to fight back. They want you to to counter everything that they do to engage in an exhaustive, uh, desperate attempt to constantly counter whatever they're doing to you. Because each time you do, that helps to map out your your, your brain. So um, why are people set up and framed? For various reasons. Um, but, uh, you know, it all it all comes down to the, their ability to, to isolate you and control you and to discredit you um, so that people won't believe the atrocities are occurring or um, they can use uh, the uh, law enforcement. Uh, it can hide behind law enforcement while they target you, et cetera. Um, and remember, when you commit a crime because of the mind control technology, that's an important metric in their in their training and research to determine, you know, once you when, well, at what point will a person lash out against another person? At what point will a person commit murder? Or at what point will a person rob and steal? How can we turn this good person into a bad person? You know, how much uh, uh, neuro programming is necessary, uh, et cetera? You know. Um, the, all of these are, are, are metrics. They're important metrics for helping them uh, perfect their technology. This is some evil, wicked stuff, I tell you. Very evil. It is beyond, it's, 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 it's beyond it's, it's, evil. It's, it's yeah. innocent people. It, it's just horrific. Children. Look, thank three- and six-year-old children are being targeted. Three- to six-year-old babies are being targeted. And, and, and a large portion of them, actually. Not just a few. Okay? Because remember... Your, your core personality uh, is pretty much set somewhere between six and seven. Okay, so they want to get to the child before the core personality is set because if they can inflict extreme trauma on that child before their core personality is set, then it's more easier to get them to disassociate from reality in the future. So they'll well, walk and, up, and, uh, and, and, and when you think about the children, um, can you talk about how the school system is used to indoctrinate the children into programs like this because children are mind controlled now from a very young age. I don't have any point of reference on that. I know that the education system is, uh, I mean, I have no point of reference how they're using education and mind control. I'm sorry. I can't answer that question. Okay. But they definitely are. Um, Hart, yeah, right. Have a question to answer? Do you have any, anything else? Absolutely, Brian. Thank you so much. This is the most, this is the best thing that's happened to me since I found out. Thank you. Well, it's a fabricated, it's a fabricated falsified stream of energy, of electromagnetic energy that they're using against you. It's like, it's like, just like a person can dial, dial a number and dial another person's phone. They're able to dial into your brain using a specific number, a specific frequency. When you dial a person, when you have your cell phone and you dial a number, what happens is that cell phone uh, transmits that, that frequency into the nearest cell tower, which, and then to that cell tower paint, uh, that cell tower relays the, 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 the signal to the person's cell phone. So it's similar to that. I mean, it's, it, it's, a, it's a fabricated and falsified stream of energy. That, when I say fabricated and falsified, I mean it contains uh, 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 data. It contains um, uh, the uh, hidden carrier frequency that they're able to manipulate their memory and thought process with. So uh, um, it, it's all about two things. It's all about directed energy and nanotechnology. Remember, the nanotechnology adheres to the neurotransmitters in your brain. And that nanotech is able to speak to and decode those neurotransmitters. That's how they're able to read your thoughts. That's how they're able to... Uh, 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 manipulate your mind. It's not just visual and verbal, it's also auditive. When I say auditive, I mean they're able to audit the mind. It's like the IRS audits the person. They're able to audit the mind with this technology. So it's all about streams of electromagnetic energy. People say that it's a beam, they hit you with a beam. They don't hit you with a beam of anything. This is a continuous, never-ending, 
24 hour a day stream of energy that is specifically tuned to your brainwave signature. So, so literally, you could be standing in a room with 100 people, and the other 99 people wouldn't even feel the, the stream of energy, but you would fall down from the pain and collapse from the floor. Why? Mm-hmm. Because they do, because only the mind control victim absorbs the energy or feels its effects. Because only the mind control victim possesses that specific brainwave signature. Mm. So the other people around you in the same room, they don't possess the brain, that same brainwave signature that you do. Their, their brainwave signature is different. So they don't, they don't absorb the energy if you look at that. The stream of energy just passes right through them and around them, and they are unaware. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, Hart, I'm going to put you on hold. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, we have about um, three more callers. Let's see. Yeah, about three more, and then we'll wrap it up because it is um, almost midnight on the East Coast. we got about five minutes, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, make your comments uh, brief, please. Hello? Yeah, hello, Brian. Hey, Jen. Yeah. Yeah, I just want to say um, thank you because I see your 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 spirit change when the when the woman asks for solutions and you and it's you, it changed and you got calmer. So I just want to say that and that's all. Did you say? So are you that. speaking about me? I got calmer. Or I no, no. A woman asks her, asks asking for solutions. What she what she can do? Well, and it, one it, of the solutions. Right, the solutions. One of, one of the solutions she can do is called thank cleansing. You, Quenching is where you learn to read active memory. You maintain your yeah, situational awareness, not just not just of your surroundings, but of your thoughts. Quenching means you're reading active memory. You're paying attention to your thoughts. Okay, so you're able to realize, you know, when when these artificial impulse injections happen, because it happens at the subconscious level, and it's happened. It's designed to make you believe that the, the, that the thoughts are your own. But if you start to see a pattern of these thoughts, if you start to correlate those thoughts with powerful emotions, like you suddenly begin to burn with a white-hot rage over and over again, okay, that's not them, that's not you, that's them, okay, so it's quenching, it's learning to read active memory, active memory is short-term memory, short-term memory is anything less than 30 seconds, long-term memory is anything more than 30 seconds, this technology is designed to target you, to target your short-term memory, while you're formulating your thoughts, while you're preparing to act, before you do act to in order to influence you to act in a way that they want you to, to, to throw you, to pitch you in some type of, of action or access sequence, whatever it may be. So you'll be sitting in your living room and, uh, you know, they know you need to go to the bank because you're out of money, so they'll inject the, the previous thought of the bank back into your mind, okay? Well, what they want you to do is they want you to get up and go to the bank to prove their technology is effective. But suppose you get up and go to the bank, and on your way to the bank, you just suddenly pull into the gas station. They could not predict that. That's spontaneity. You just disrupted the pattern. The pattern was you going to the bank. So another thing you can do in order to break the patterns that they're using to map your mind, because if, if they can't build single coherent patterns of thought, then they can't map out your brain. It's to be spontaneous every day, every chance you get. They know you're being spontaneous. They know you're doing it. Uh, but it doesn't matter because you're still breaking the pattern. You're still, you're still disrupting their technology. Okay, so the, so the, so quenching and, and spontaneity are another are two two more things that you can do in, in order to be able to. But I, I think the most effective for me is redirection. Redirection is basically establishing a working reference and then redirecting back to that working reference every time you're attacked. So, for example, you establish you know a, 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 a working reference. For example, uh, it's something or someone that makes you extremely happy in life. Like for me, it's Jesus. And every time I'm attacked, I just revert back to Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What I did was I redirected away from the remote neural attack. What they were doing was they were trying to get me to think about this, and I thought about that instead. I redirected away from, from the remote neural attack. So mm-hmm. because often what, they'll do, often what they'll do is they'll push you down into an extremely drowsy state before they attack you, before they try to disrupt your memory and thought process. Because anything which lowers, and they use theta waves to do that. That's how they put you, that's how they make, that's how they, they put you into a force to do sleep. You know, they, they use theta waves, suddenly make you drowsy and just knock you out. Okay? All right, so that's theta waves. That's a theta, so that's, that's, that's anything below four hertz. 
Anything up between four and seven hertz, that's a super relaxed state. Okay, that's also theta state, but it's not asleep. It's super relaxed. So what they'll do is they'll slowly bring you down with theta waves, okay, increasing the frequency each time until you're you're in a super relaxed state, and then they'll they'll hit you with sudden split second drowsiness. And then when you okay, so I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Okay, which frequency? Uh, what is they're that? doing, what they're doing is they're using anything which lowers a person's energy level and vitality makes them more susceptible to mind control programming. Mm. So what they're doing is they're pitching you into functional disorientation. So you're suddenly you have a split second drowsiness and you almost you can't even keep your eyelids open. And then the next moment you're alert again. What happened was that was mind control. That was a remote neural attack. And they used extreme drowsiness to trick your brain into accepting their remote neural attack. They want you thinking about this. They don't want you thinking about that. So they're going to use remote neural attacks to control and direct your, your memory and thought process. When I say memory and thought process, what I'm saying is your train of thought, your narrative of thought, what you're thinking about. Okay. And one of the, ways, right. one of the ways that you do that, and one of the ways that you defeat that uh, is simply uh, using a process called redirection. And redirection is just thinking about some, uh, you know, important event, some event in your life, like the, the birth of your first child, uh, or some person in life that makes you happy, that makes you extremely happy. Then that, that happy person, uh, that, that happy event is called your working reference. And so every time you get hit with that drowsiness, that split second drowsiness, you just automatically snap to it and you say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. You just defeated their technology. You redirect it away from the remote neural attack it, it, to to your working reference, Jesus. So, so okay. that's called redirection. Very good, thank Very you. Good. Okay, we're going to You're take sorry. another um, another question. This will be your last opportunity to ask questions. So, start eight. We're going to wrap it up. Start eight. This will be your last opportunity. Okay, we do have one person here. Hello. Hi, I have two questions. Can I uh, two quick questions? Can I ask you um, one at a time? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. My my first question for those of us who are um, extremely targeted in like the worst program and 100% isolated from family, friends, set up with fake relationships. Is there any chance or is there any hope? Is there any hope for us to ever have to be able to have a normal relationship of any sort with anybody without interference from these people? Yeah. Um, yeah. First of all, um, okay. First of all, you need Jesus, uh, and, and if you don't know Jesus, you've got bigger trouble than mind control. Secondly, after after you know Jesus, you can you can begin to to find people who think the way you do about Jesus. Okay, uh, find people that have the same habits and the same uh, likes and, and the same uh, hobbies that you have. Okay, and then you you begin to you you what you need to do before you can tell them about it, you must first educate them. You can't walk up and say, I'm, I'm hearing voices. I think you're crazy as hell. You, know, you can't tell them that these remote neural attacks, um, the, you can't tell them that, that uh, you know, I'm being stalked by hundreds of people. They'll think you lost your mind. So what you do is you educate them first. First of all, you say, hey, did you, hear, did you, did you read that article about uh, organized thoughts? Did you read that article about mind control? And then you start showing them the articles and you start educating them, slowly educating the person. Okay, until so they, they come to a position where they think that they accepted it, not that you that you make them accept it, but they they believe it on their own. They become educated to the point that you can now bring up what's happening to you, and they won't look at you like you're crazy. So first, I think, I, think you, I, I think I think I think I think I think I think I stated my question wrong. I'm um, I'm in a, whatever type of program where they it seems like they will not allow me to have friends. And they they will turn people against me and and have me 100 percent isolated. So given that, I mean, um, with what they do, do you think there's any chance I can ever have a relationship that they will not interfere with, with it would like either either turn them into a target as well for hanging out with me or or turn them against me? Is there any chance I can have a, a possible any kind of relationship, friendship, relationship, whatever, without them interfering in some way? Is there any hope for that? That's, that's what I'm. That's what I was trying to tell you. The person, okay. the person must listen. Listen. They don't understand biocommunication technology. They don't understand uh, remote neural monitoring, remote neural manipulation. All of this is just—it's so. It's called the off-cam razor principle. The more complicated the truth, the less the likelihood of belief by the ordinary person. 
So what you have to do is you have to educate them first. If you're interested in somebody, you're interested in a relationship with a person, you first must first you must make sure that that person is, is – there's no such thing as a, as a fun date. There's no such thing as, as a fun uh, moment in life. Life is, is very short and very dangerous and very real, especially if you're a targeted individual. Okay? So you find people, first of all, that share the same hobbies and likes that you have, and then once you find those people, you begin to educate them. You don't tell them that you're a targeted individual, okay? You just educate them. Hey, did you read about this? Did you hear about that? And when, once you, you, you come to a position where you think that they start to believe that this is possible, then you begin to reveal what's happening in your life, okay, to them. Before you can do that, you must educate them. Because most people okay. are about the technology. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And my second question, if, if we were to, like, constantly defeat the system by doing all the things you mentioned, um, if we were to constantly, persistently do that, is there any chance that we could be untargeted by defeating the system for a continuous length of time? Can we possibly be untargeted? Mm, the answer is, I mean, I, I don't know what what, uh, what the criteria is for, for, the, for the people that they stop targeting and the people that continue targeting. But my understanding is this is lifelong. This is long-term research. And the people that, they, you know, that, that become a liability to them, they have ways of, of getting rid of them, okay? But the problem is this. You have to fight the technology every day to survive. They're going to create chaos in your life. They're going to create trauma in your life in order to constantly provoke you into emotional responses they can remotely measure. So no matter what you do, they're going to use what's called the hyper game theory against you. They're going to base their next move on your last move. They're going to base their next response on your last response. In other words, this, this hyper game is, is a game that never ends because there's always the next move. Therefore, there's always, a high, there's always a higher optimum. So the game goes on forever. So the best, the best, way, the best way, the thing that you have to realize in order to defeat that, you have to either never play the game to begin with, which that's not always an option, okay? Sometimes you have to play or perish. And or secondly, you have to put the, you have to place the hive mind team, the CIA hive mind team, in a position where they can no longer better their position against you. Okay, and the way you do that for example, this one lady was telling me that they were using her past against her constantly. Apparently, she'd had some tragic event in her past, or she had done something bad, and they were constantly using her past to bring shame and despair and humiliation and remorse, uh, all of which is, is trauma, the psychological trauma, to, to map out the neural, neural pathways of her brain. Well, I told her, I said, you need to place the, the CIA and DIA hive mind team into a position where they can no longer better their position against you. And she said, how? And I said, the next time they remind you about your past, you remind them about their future. Okay? So what you do is, in order to, to try and achieve some degree of normalcy in your life, you, you, must, first, you must first redirect, find, establish a working record, someone or something that makes you really happy in life, and then redirect back to that working record every day when you're attacked. This, 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 whether you realize it or not, you're being attacked hundreds of times a day. You don't realize it because most of this is on the subliminal. A subconscious level, but it's happening. So once you begin to understand the technology, once you begin to defeat the technology using multicast, doing a, or a thing, you know, saying more than one thing at one time, whistling while you work, reading a, reading a book while listening to music, etc., cooking while watching television, um, that's called multitasking. It defeats their system. Another thing is spontaneity. Be spontaneous and speed of thought. Don't plan anything out if you don't have to. Don't plan out your day if you don't have to. Just do it at speed of thought. That spontaneity it breaks the pattern that they're trying to build. Uh, the third thing is quenching. Quenching is, 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 is reading, is maintaining situational awareness, not just in your surroundings, which is important, but of your thought, of your memory and thought process. Because if you keep having the same thoughts over and over again, and you keep having powerful emotions with those thoughts over and over again, such as them injecting the memories of gang stalkers and constantly injecting the memory of uh, the impulse of anger, et cetera, you know, pitching you into a white hot rage every day. You know, you've got to be able to, to, to read active memory, read your thoughts, and then contrast the thoughts that you're having at that moment with the way you normally thought before you were targeted. Okay? So so that's called learning to read active memory. And then once you begin to see a pattern of this happening over and over again, you're constantly beginning to, to obsessively and compulsively think of something over and over and over. That's not you, that's them. That's a supercomputer. Okay? Injecting constantly the same thing over and over to manipulate you. You've got to learn to read active memory to stop that. 
and then you right. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you mentioned those three things because those three things that you mentioned they do they have been helping me somewhat. So I'm a bit uh, my my situation is bad, but it does help. I think those three things are very important. Thank you, thank you, Brian. I had to go. Okay, okay thank yeah. you, Kim. Thank you. Okay, we do have one more. Um, okay. I I have a I have a, a comment. Um, you mentioned a couple of times focusing on the things that make makes you happy. And my comment is that because this is a trauma based program, um, a lot of our positive memories get erased and replaced with memories that they want us to have with all this trauma stuff. Right. Well, so sometimes, it, 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 sometimes it can be very difficult. I think what I'm trying to say is sometimes it can be very difficult to think of, of something positive, even something in your past, when you're constantly dealing with all this negativity and uh, and all the trauma-based stuff. <clears throat> okay, so what are you saying? What's your, what's your question? I guess what, what I'm saying is that, you know, it, it's almost like you have to – uh, really make a conscious effort to try to remember anything right. positive, you know, because right. you know, so much trauma. And, and you mentioned how uh, one person can be attacked hundreds of times a day. Um, well, they are. And I not know it, but I, I do know it. Yeah. I, I do know it. I, I know yeah. for me it is hundreds of times a day, and it is so much trauma, and that's why I'm feeling um, physical medical effects because of all this trauma now. But I guess I'm just saying that we almost have to write down the positive things that happen so that we can remember them. Well, again, um, there's a difference between mind control and brainwashing. People don't know that. Uh, like people confuse the two often. Brainwashing is the erasure of memory. And they can erase your memories by amplifying the acetylcholine levels uh, in, in your brain. By, 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 by increasing the acetylcholine levels, by amplifying the, the, the amount of acetylcholine in your brain, they can cause you to forget things. It's called brainwashing, memory erasure. So brainwashing and mind control are two different things. Mind control is, the, is, is controlling your memory and thought process. Brainwashing is actually erasing memory and thought process. So and do they things. do the brainwashing as well, Brian? Do, is that oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, especially if they're trying to subdue the state. Yeah. Uh, um, especially if you're trying to to, to, uh, to subdue your faith, for example, or to, to subdue the love that you have for your spouse or um, you know your children or whatever, um, they you know they want to they want to erase totally erase specific memories, not just you know all memories. They're not, they're not doing that. They're erasing specific memories. And the same is true for implanting memories. You know, when you go into a psychiatrist's office and you sit down and you say, you know, the psychiatrist uses hypnotism to help you deal with some tragic tragic event in your life. What the psychiatrist, psychiatrist will do when he's hypnotizing you is he'll walk you back into your past. Well, that's what they're doing with the neuroprogramming at night, okay? The neuroprogramming at night is called sleep. One of the things they're doing is called sleep hypnosis. They're actually walking you back into your past and planting falsified memories, okay? Then the next day they have to, they have to gauge whether or not the, 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 the neuroprogramming was effective. So what they'll do is they'll walk up and they'll start talking about the thing they're trying to erase. Uh, some tragic, some, some happy event in your childhood, like when you were seven, you got a bicycle. Well, they're trying to erase that. So they'll walk up next to you during the day and they'll start talking about their, their, their red bicycle. You know, when I, was, when I was seven years old, I had a red bicycle. Well, they want to see if you're going to respond to that, if the technology of neuroprogramming is affected, the brainwashing is affected, et cetera. Okay? It's the same is true for whatever they're trying to achieve. They're going to use trigger stimuli. You know, if, if, they're, if they're trying to, to uh, manipulate your, your, your belief system and your religion, they're going to start engaging in conversations every day around you about God to see if they're able to subdue your faith by targeting your frontal cortex with, with streams of, uh, of, of electromagnetic energy. By, uh, uh, or they'll, they'll walk up and sit down next to you and they'll have a, a Jesus T-shirt on. Or, you know, they'll have... They'll, be reading a Bible or something. These are all situational scenarios, okay? Not conversational. If they were engaged in a conversation about that, that would be conversational scenario. Conversation, street theater. That's what street theater is. And they're going to use that on you every day to gauge whether the neural programming is effective or not. How do you determine what they're doing? By looking for patterns. Not that many people in the world are constantly talking about God around you all the time. You start to look for patterns, okay? And then 
and then you multitask. When they start trying to manipulate you with their, with their, with their situational or conversational scenarios, their street theater, you put your earphones on and you start listening to music while you work or read, out, or read or work out, you know. You begin to multitask, okay, or you begin to, to, uh, to redirect, you know, the, the, the things that I told you, that's what you should do. Um, but, but the neuroprogramming, the, 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 the street theater will always, will always contain uh, events or topics they're using in the neuroprogramming. So they have to gauge and measure whether it's effective. So they're not going to sit down and start talking about the price of tea in China. They're going to sit down and start talking about whatever it is they're trying to program your brain at night to do. When, when are people most vulnerable? When are armies most vulnerable? When are animals most vulnerable? They're most vulnerable when they're sleeping. That's when they attack you with neural programs, when you're sleeping. But there's no way to verify whether the programming is working effectively or not while you're sleeping. They have to engage in these while you're awake. They have to constantly inject the memories back into your subconscious to see if you act on those memories. Brian, do you know anything about hypnosis and how that works? Does, does that, uh, can hypnosis actually happen through conversation and while we're asleep? And how, how, how does the hypnosis work and what is it about? It? Hypnosis, I, 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 it's already 12, it's already, it's already 915, so I imagine it's pretty late wherever they are. Um, hypnosis is done by tying a person to, to a stimuli and, and, and uh, hold on for a second, hold on for a second. What? Okay, you guys, we're going to wrap it up. We have one more um, person who has a question, and that's New York, and then we'll be we'll be done for the evening. This has been so informative. Brian, we'll be right back, I believe. Oh, I think he hung up again. Uh, let me try to let me try to reach him. Hold on. Okay, I actually got his voicemail, so I think maybe his phone went out. I'm not sure. But I'm going to go ahead and end the call, and um, let's see, we did have one person. Um, New York, I'm so sorry. I think, Brian, I think we lost him. Not a problem. Sorry. No, that's, that's cool. Yeah. It's RT from New York City. I, I just got in a little while ago. Oh. And what I didn't even Archie, realize. Archie, yes, ma'am. Archie, yes, hold on. Ma'am. I think he's back. Hang on a second, okay? Okay. Hold on. Brian, is that you? Uh, yeah, sorry. Somehow I got okay, disconnected. Okay, so sorry. Can can this um, last person ask you his question? This is R.T. from New York, and then we'll let you go. I know it's getting late. Okay, sure, sure. Okay, go right ahead, R.T. Okay. Well, basically, my question consists of wanting to know uh, if you were targeted, is it possible to be targeted from birth? And if so, how do they go about it? Because I'm, you know, I'm aware about the MK Ultra uh, projects and stuff that is like sub programs and whatnot that vary, you know, in existence from the 70s uh, or even before that. I, I believe. My question is to make it clear: uh, How do they go about choosing a baby? To be taught. You're targeted from birth, is what I'm saying. And can, is that possible to, to you know, continue on for like years, decades later on with the with the research that they do? Yes, as a matter of fact, it is happening. We know that. Um, because people are, are, are explaining they're having these symptoms of tinnitus and boxing and the universe is targeted the individual dealing with when they're children. Um, but you have to understand that children are targeted. Um, because it's more of, if you can catch them before the age of 67 when their core personality has, has not yet formed, uh, fully uh, uh, formed, then you can, you can inflict extreme trauma on them between, uh, at a young age. And it's easier uh, as life, in life as they get older to force them to disassociate from reality. What they're doing when, when they're doing this 
creation of uh, multiple personality disorder, altered personality. To create this artificially induced multiple personality disorder by targeting children who are extremely young. Uh, therefore, once they're traumatized at an extremely young age, then they're more likely to disassociate. They're more likely to, their core personality is more likely to fragment. And, and then they can, they can locate the alters, the alter personalities, they're called alters. They can then locate those uh, alters, uh, psychological program techniques, et cetera, and then they, those alters can be programmed. And that's how they create, for example, super spies, so-called Venturian candidates. Uh, because one alter doesn't know the other alter. One person, alter personality, you know, you can literally create Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, and so targeting children at a young age is an important part of their technology. So the answer to your question is yes. Okay. You know, I, re I remember hearing on one of these calls when I uh, first got targeted, a lady had called in and she was talking to whoever the moderator was. I don't remember. But she, she had a newborn baby. I think she said the baby was about two or three months old. And she was asking if uh, the moderator thought that the baby could be getting uh, targeted or VCK because she said that she notices how her little baby looks up in the air and looks around like she was listening to something. So she in her heart felt that that baby was possibly getting V2K because she said she had other children and she never noticed it. And she could clearly tell this baby was listening to something. Um, and I guess there's really no way to prove that, especially with an infant who can't communicate to tell you. Right, or who doesn't voices. understand a language. Right? I mean, how can you, how can you use neural, neural linguistic programming uh, on a child who doesn't know anything about linguistics? <laughs> you know? Um, you know, you have to be able to communicate with that child. So what they do is, at a young age is they just inflict mostly extreme trauma. Um, and then if the child grows up, uh, they continue the trauma uh, to a point where they can force the individual to, to, to break, to snap, to disassociate from reality. Um, so, um, you know, yes, we know for a fact they target little children. Babies, we know this. We know this is nothing new. It's part of the monarch program. And it's, 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 you know, incredibly evil uh, because they're incredibly evil people. They're sociopaths who are programmed into psychopaths. Um, they, they are the selected to these for these jobs, the psychiatrists, the psychologists, the neuroscientists, etc., who have demonstrated a propensity to kill at, at command, kill on command, uh, who have no conscience, who can follow orders without uh, uh, any moral uh, conscience. Uh, uh, getting in the way. They are desensitized. They are placed in a room where they are shown their drug and they are shown uh, you know, intense video of uh, intense scenes of horror uh, and uh, you know, to the point where they become desensitized. They can just watch a little child get killed or a little granny get killed in the street and just eat a bacon sandwich. You know, it doesn't bother them. You know, they could kill you and then go have a cup of coffee. It just wouldn't bother them. They're sociopaths who have been programmed into psychopaths. These are people, these are intellectual barbarians. They are highly educated. They are doctors, they are uh, psychologists, they are scientists, um, and they're hiding at some site. They're, you know, they're, they're at the university, they're at the hospital, they're at, you know, pretending to be the pastor at the church, etc. cetera. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, this is this is this is why they they would do that because um, because trauma-based mind control requires satanic ritual abuse. Now, when you say satanic ritual abuse, people get confused because you're talking about the devil. No, we're talking about ritualistic torture. That's what you're talking about. It may include the demonic if you, you know you, if that's what you respond to, but satanic ritual abuse is just long-term, brutal ritualistic torture. And you expose the children to that at a very young age, um, and you catch them before their their core personality develops. And if you can do that, then you can you can force them to disassociate from reality quicker later in life. I have a question in regards to that. I've got to get off. I've got to, I've got to get off, man. I, if y'all want to talk next Wednesday, we can. Okay, so, um, okay, well, uh, I, I just want to thank you, Brian. Thank you, sincerely mm -hmm. thank you, because this was very um, informative, and you gave us some solutions, which I love. I don't like talking about problems without solutions. Remember, the truth is out there waiting to be found. Wake up, take the red pill, and wake up. Wake up, take the red pill, and wake up. Wake up, take the red pill, and wake up. Wake up, take the red pill, and wake up.
Join the Red Mill Info War. Break the Matrix. Free your mind. Take the red pill.